Good evening once again. We are actually starting this time. I am Roy Morris, Director of Citizen Engagement with the Prime Minister's Office. And we have at the head table three persons with whom you should be most familiar. MP for St. Lucie, the Prime Minister of Barbados, and the MP for St. Andrew, who is also the Acting Minister with the responsibility for it. Good evening once again. We are actually starting this time. I am Roy Morris, Director of Citizen Engagement with the Prime Minister's Office. And we have at the head table three persons with whom you should be most familiar. MP for St. Lucie, the Prime Minister of Barbados, and the MP for St. Andrew, who is also the Acting Minister with the responsibility for transport and works and water resources. Um, we have in the audience a number of officials from various government departments who will also be here to respond to your queries. As we said before, the row of chairs directly in front of me um, is for speakers. First, the first eight, and once you've spoken, you can then revert to your preferred seat in position, and the next eight persons will move into those seats. That way we don't have to stand up the entire night waiting to reach the microphone. It would be greatly appreciated if everyone who wants to speak actually takes the time to sign up so that there is an order to what is done. With that, I will invite the first person to the mic to speak with the head table. Good night to the panel and good night to the audience. My name is Jefferson Phillips. I just want to ask a question. Um, Sorry, what's the name again? Jefferson Phillips. Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Likewise. Mr. Phillips, mm -hmm. which part of St. Lucie are you from? I live in Lowlands. Thank you, sir. Please proceed. Yes, um, at long last, Construction began on the Pikona Bridge, I think almost three years ago. And then it was halted. So I want to ask if it's a question of finance or if it's a structural issue or any other reason why construction has been halted for such a long time. And then I have two other matters. No problem. Let me start with this. You have both the parliamentary secretary here. Um, the substantive minister, deputy prime minister, is out of the country, so let me apologize for her up front. And the attorney general, the substantive attorney general, is also doing today the peer review of Barbados' um, financial um, jurisdictions and legal jurisdiction under the Financial Action Task Force. So this is where the world measures us in terms of our effectiveness on money laundering and terrorism finance, and etc. So he and a number of technical officials are out. Alas, um, Mr. Springer, and also with him is the Chief Technical Officer, the Deputy Chief Technical Officer, and a number of other officers from Public Works. So hopefully you will get all your answers, because I certainly recall visiting that bridge and also being up here when we had the extraordinary flood that St. Lucie is not accustomed to as a form of an example that the climate crisis hit this parish too. So, Romel, thank you, sir. Good evening. Thank you. 
And thank you, Mr. Phillips, for your question. I'm certainly happy to see you. <laughs> well, the Picarna Bridge, let me, let me just share the good news first. We are, we are in the process of restarting work on that bridge. We are currently awaiting um, a quotation from Preconco that we should have within the next two weeks. But I'm going to have the Deputy um, Chief Technical Officer, Mr. Tudor, go into the details as to what is the current status of the bridge and how soon we are expected to start work on, on that bridge. Mr. Tudor? Mr. Tudor, no, you're going to have to come to a mic stairway. I'll pass one of these mics to Mr. Tudor, please. Um, as Dr. Springer said, we are about to start back this work soon. We are expecting a quote from Preconco um, in about two weeks' time. They said it will take about four additional weeks to have the precast bridge completed uh, at, um, at Picorna. Uh, you would notice that we was cleared, we'd have cleared that area, when Patrick, we would have cleared that area about two weeks ago, right? Um, as soon as we get the word from Preconco that the bridge has been, that the precast uh, culvert is ready, we would clear the area again and install it. Now, the problem that we had was that that area is inundated with um, flooding and, and stuff because you would appreciate it is a bridge, so water passes under it. Uh, so we weren't, weren't able to do anything October, November, December because we had continuous rainfall. That's why we decided to go with the precast option. Precast option is going to be much faster and the work should be completed by the beginning of the rainy season. So between, let's say, April or so, you will have a new brown bridge at Picarna. You and I both heard it. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Tudor, and, and I thank you for your full explanation because I don't think people realize the extent to which the climate crisis is having consequences on how we spend money. Peter will tell you that when we had the flood that Saturday, um, where was the bridge that knocked out again? Up, going up towards Date Tree Hill. And the bottom line is that this is not the only place it has happened. But the one refrain that I heard from everybody in St. Lucie that Saturday as we moved around is that St. Lucie never saw water like that. And that even in the back here of this school, if you recall, a huge, huge, huge pond had developed as well as a result of that weather event. So please. So hopefully... Um, I will hold them to it. I will give them an extra month or two and say June. You understand? Because I always put in a little extra for anything. So by June this year, Mr. Tudor? Yes, ma'am, but certainly it has to be completed before the rain start with us again. So latest June, if you say um, June, July. But um, we are trying, we are shooting, we are shooting for April. That's yeah, what, that's we my... definitely don't want July like us. Right. So definitely... By April, we should be um, that should be installed. Okay. All right, that's good news, and I I will hold you to that as well. Because when there is heavy rainfall, um, access on that road is the issue is not money. Impeded. The issue is okay. being able to plan out and plot out the work. Okay. And the other problem is this: we may have access to money. We may even have access to being able to access debt but we can only spend so much a year because of a program of debt sustainability you understand mm -hmm. so if your debt is up at a hundred thousand dollars and the bank tell you gotta bring it down to thirty thousand dollars by 2036 or sixty thousand let me be a little more appropriate sixty percent of what it is now then you got to work to bring it down so you while you paying to your mortgage and you buying food and doing everything and you paying the bank where you owe them 
per month, you got to put aside a little more to bring down the principal. You with me? Mm -hmm. And that's the exact position that the country is in. So, yes, you will still borrow, but you're spending much more, but you can only spend according to how much fiscal space you got to bring down the debt over time. If we could spend more, we have access to four or five hundred million dollars almost in funding for roads, don't we, Mr. Tudor? But we can't spend it all one time because we got to bring down the debt over time. You with me? Yes. All right, my brother. Continue. Okay. Um, the Lowlands Road, where I live. That road, um, about, I think over two years ago, sidewalks um, started to be built on that, on that road. But the road is very narrow. I think the intention was to widen that road. So they started with the sidewalk, and then they stopped again. I think last year, new means were, were laid, and we were, I'm thankful for that. But the attention needs to be paid to that road because the, the two um, sides, um, sidewalk and um, the land of mains have they, they, they dug up the road and it needs to be to be repaired really and it's not it is yeah. not um it's not good and matter of fact I, I um, hear you and I can go and look at it myself Peter would tell you normally we would have gotten to do the rubbing shoulders before but we're actually going to do this one after so I am making a careful note on the Lowlands Road for us to visit, Mr. Tudor and Mr. Springer, to make sure that we follow through for you, both on the mains and also the sidewalks. Part of the problem in this parish, and I'm going to invite Water Authority Rommel to speak to it, is really the fact that you have a peculiar problem out of all of the parishes in the country with the brown water. And, and you don't need to tell me about it because I know. And just after the election last year, Allendale came out and they went in to take out the silt. We're now hearing that there's additional work that has to be done. And I will ask either Mr. Halliday or Mr. Leslie to speak to that because the truth is that roads in St. Lucie will continue to be a problem as long as mains in St. Lucie and service lines are a problem. Because until you can change out the mains and the service lines, you're not going to be able properly to do the roads in a way that is acceptable for the medium to long term. But who's going to speak? Um, Elvin, come. Alex, sorry, come. Come, Starboy. Mics, mics, mics. Mm. No, no, no. You stay there. He have his own mic. Alex, I feel... Um, Alex, look back. The mic, the cameras are behind too yeah. for the ones who can watch you. We're not going live tonight. I told you all in October and November that we are going to do delay because the government don't got the money to pay money for people who are liable people. So we go with a slight delay of an hour. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. They've got cameras in the back there too, right? No, I can tell you straight. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there, there's some significant problems in, in uh, St. Lucie in relation to brown water, and I, I can guarantee that most of you here are about to ask about that. Now, there is a two-fold problem. It is one, we have a very aged mains network. It breaks constantly, and, we also, and therefore cause disruption in the, in the, in the service and therefore causes brown water. At Allendale, over the past few years, we've noticed that the siltation, what's happened that there was some silt in Allendale. Siltation is a natural process, but usually it takes 30, 40 years for a significant amount of silt to accumulate. In the past few years, with the constant change. Sometimes you have heavy rainfall, yet when you expect low rainfall, you will constantly hear about climate and so forth. 
Now, these things have acted to, to accelerate the siltation in Allendale Well. Last year, we went through a process of desilting that well, right? And it has been desilted before in 2003, anywhere around there. And we expected to get a few more years out of it that way. However, we, we've noticed that the process of, of siltation seems to be increasing. And what we've done after the silting is we've already designed and have ordered a, a, a filtration system to remove the silt that is coming from the Allendale well. Now, this will not be a complete solution. This will remove that silt. However, there's rust that will come from the pipes. We were using a sequestrant to reduce, that is a chemical to reduce the amount of silt that fall from the pipes. But I know some of you have seen pipes that we took out of the system, and you've seen the level of corrosion within those pipes. Some of those pipes are much older than the average age in here. And so that is why we are now in that process of replacing those mains in an effort to, and it will take time, in an effort to reduce the impact of the discolored water that is uh, impacting mainly the upper section of the, of the parish of St. Lucie. The difficulty is, is that you speak pretty. <laughs> but you haven't told the people that St. Lucie is a parish with enough kilometers, enough people living far apart. And in the circumstances, the cost of the replacement of mains is going to be significantly higher, and therefore you are going to have to prioritize which mains come before which. Mr. Leslie, the best, Mr. Leslie will deal with that section. Oh, I see how you shift, <laughs> shift one thing. All right. But, but I want to talk straight to the people of St. Lucie. Look, I spent three, four months down here moving around with a lot of you. And I've gotten to know a lot of you. And I'm not going to come here and fool anybody. And these mains were put down over decades. Mr. Leslie? Over decades, correct? Regrettably, it is going to take time to change them out. And regrettably, instead of us doing that consistently for the last 20 years, as I keep saying in every other parish speaks, this government has become the Electrolux vacuum cleaner. All we're doing is cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. And now it's cleaning up the brown water and the roads. When I asked, as I moved around St. Lucie, what were the two things people were most concerned about? It was brown water and roads. And roads. roads and brown water. You're getting the lights for the playing fields. You're getting Archer's Bay redone to be a proper picnic ground for the people of St. Lucie, just like how we got the botanical gardens downtown. You understand? So those things will come. But the scale of the problem with both the roads and the brown water is going to take dedicated work for the next few years. Probably, what, five years? Mm -hmm. You understand? But we're going to do it, and we're going to concentrate it primarily where the problem is greatest and where the greatest number of people stand to benefit, obviously. Now, if I get increased productivity and we can change the... <laughs> we have a guest here tonight, Professor Mazzucato, who is helping us on the mission economy, and she, I call a force of nature. You understand? But if we can get the international community... Where you all see me travel, believe you me, I hate traveling. But I am trying to argue the same debt sustainability point I said just now, that instead of trying to make me bring back down my debt to 60% of GDP by 2036, which is only 12 years away, I need to push that out to 2040 or 2045 because that means the difference between whether I can spend $100 million on replacement of pipes and Capital program for the Water Authority and MTW, or if I could spend 200. You with me? Because if I can't get the fiscal space, I can't do it. And what we're telling the public outside, the international community, is that you tell me 
that for every dollar that we spend in prevention, we save seven dollars in remediation, in fixing. So therefore, let me have the space now to fix the problems rather than having to wait to come and fix it like the bridge going up by day three, which can cost me more than if I could have reinforced it beforehand. Are we on the same page? I can't come here to tell you what you want. Here I come here to tell you what the facts are and then basically what the battles the country facing. And if we can get that, then we can continue to push the envelope I ask them and demand, you can't build a school like this and pay back for it in seven years, we will break you. You need 20-year money and 30-year money to pay back. You could build your house and pay back for it in five years or seven years. Anybody in here? Can't hear you. How many of y'all got mortgages in here? And how many people with mortgages can pay back the mortgage in five, seven, or ten years? Majority of people need how much time to pay back a mortgage? Huh? 20, 25, or 30. And it's no different with a lot of the other infrastructure that we're building. Because if I got to look for money to pay at the same time that I'm trying to do other things to help people, you ain't got it. But the same international community, when Britain fought World War I and said that they couldn't afford to repay the debt for World War I, and also look for more money to borrow to rebuild Britain from World War I. You know, they get the time. And they get from 1914 to 2014 to pay off the debt, 100 years. So if they get 100 years, who is we? Well, I'm begging for 100. I want 25, 30, or 40. Because with that, we can then replace water mains that are 100 years old. When Britain built those water mains and put them down, they had an empire. We only got a country. <laughs> so let's be real and let's see how we can do it. Mr. Leslie, please. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, in addition to what the Prime Minister said and my colleague, um, Mr. Eiffel, the infrastructure in St. Lucie is, is old. Um, all of the infrastructure, we... I can go as far back as uh, to say like um, the reservoirs. We had a reservoir at Boscobel that we had to completely replace. We had to, we have issues with um, the reservoir at Half Acre. Um, and to do work on that, we had to erect a new reservoir there at Half Acre as well. So that is like, um, that, that handles the reservoirs in the, in the parish. Then uh, not to interrupt issue. you, but I just want people to know that you built a new reservoir at Boscobel. Yes, we built a new one at Boscobel and a new one at Half Acre. So two new want, reservoirs. At two. So that I want you to know that even though we're fixing the mains, we've also spent millions of dollars to put in new reservoirs that did not exist for how long? Those old reservoirs were how old? Um, the, the one at Half Acre that is, I think it's in the 1930s or something like that, that, that was constructed. 1930s, almost 90 years ago. Right. So and the have, one in Boscobel? That was in the 1970s. 50 yeah. years ago. But because of the, it was a, a metal tank and because of, it was right at the top there was getting the sea blast that, that um, affected it and it was corroded um, quickly, more quickly than some of the other reservoirs we have on the interior of the island. Then in terms of the means, the, the network in St. Lucie is extensive and as the Prime Minister said, the, the, you have to lay a lot of pipe to get to the different districts around St. Lucie. So we're looking at over 30 kilometers of, of mains that we have to replace in this parish. We have done, we started and we are doing it in phases. So we started um, from Checker Hall Corner and we went up to Sela um, in the first phase. Then we went from Sela all the way around to Hope. We came back then and we went from the junction of Allendale Cart Road through by the girls industrial school, um, cross Bourbon um, Highway, and we ended up just outside of, um, just below the, the school here as you're going down to go to, to Crab Hill. Um, we also did a replacement from Lambert's up to Boscobel across the same day, Tree Hill Bridge that um, collapsed. When that bridge collapsed, it took a section of the main with it. We had to rush there and do the replacement there as well. Um, we did the main in, in Lowlands, as the gentleman was just saying, Mr. 
Phyllis was just saying, um, we replaced the main there. We did an uh, extension from Chancel out to Rung Rock. Um, that's about 11 kilometers of main that we replaced so far, but we still have a lot more to do. What we're doing now is going into those communities like um, Crab Hill. We've started a replacement in Crab Hill, and the intention is to replace about six kilometers of main in the Crab Hill area itself. So we're gonna be doing Crab Hill, Sealer, Grape Hall, um, content, all those areas within that um, confined we're, and surroundings, we are going to be replacing those. We also know that we have to do um, Maycox, from Maycox Road coming around to Broomfield. Um, those are going to be included as well. That's about three kilometers of mains um, going into all those avenues down there. We are experiencing brown water problems again in um, Josie Hill. And there are about three kilometers of mains in the Josie Hill area from the Rock Hall, Derms, Rock Hall, Derms, and Josie Hill that we have to we have to replace. And then you have Cave Hill down to um, Pike Corner that we have to replace again. Um, as the Prime Minister and Mr. Eiffel said, it's a very intensive process, and, and we have to do it in phases coming all around. As we do these replacements, you will see an improvement in the, the, the quality of the water and the pressure. I know in Crab Hill, even when we try to, to do flushing, and flushing is one of the mechanisms that helps you to relieve some of that brown water, the pressure is so low that you can't do the flushing properly because the, main, the rust on the inside of the main is, is extensive. So we have to do um, those replacements in, in all those areas coming around. Mr. Leslie, before you sit, um, we've spoken about mains, yeah. but you and I spoke about a bigger problem on Friday when mm -hmm. we did estimates. Yes. And that is that separate from the mains are the service lines. And explain yes. to the audience for me about what are the service lines and what are the problems, because I'm not hiding anything from mm -hmm. the people of this country. And I want Barbadians to understand because sometimes we are liable to forget. Sometimes we can have a short memory that first and foremost, I would have loved that these mains were being replaced 20, 30, and 40 years ago. I would have loved that the reservoirs were equally replaced. But we've come in having to do all of that. And most of these reservoirs that we are fixing could not withstand a category one hurricane. Right. And that is why we've had to face, you were about the ones up here, but we had Lodge Hill, Fort George, and, all of and them. The one. Uh, any one of them taken out in a storm can take as much as 20, 30, 40,000 people in ones in town. Yes. And the ones up here, about 10,000, 20,000 people could cumulatively, uh, yeah. depending on where they are. So when you consider that households, each household has on average four to five people. So that is the impact of what we're trying to fight up against. But separate from the mains, separate from the brown water, separate from the reservoirs, tell them about the service lines too, my brother. Okay. Okay. Um, on a monthly basis, we get about uh, 1,200 complaints um, of broken service lines across the island. And that just gives you an idea of the extent. Or we have 100, about 110 to 115,000 customers. So that's about 1% of our network that is breaking constantly um, every month. And a lot of those lines are age. Um, we are doing a replacement now in Rock Dunder, um, replacing some of the lines. And as we try to replace some of those lines, the, the main itself is dropping into holes. So we have to do some replacement there as well. Um, when we do the replacement of the mains, we are doing a comprehensive job. So when we replace the mains, we're replacing the service lines as well. And we are burying them at a, a deeper depth than they are installed now. Um, years ago, the roads, a lot of the roads were not designed to carry the, the weight that they are carrying now. So the service lines were just, and they didn't have the, the equipment and the tools to install the service lines. So they were just laid shallow, um, just under, the, the road. Um, we are actually doing an extensive job and, and taking them down 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches below the, the depth of the road. Sadly, they, they don't endure that, 
load that they, they, from the traffic and they will last us a lot longer. So yes, we have the mains. Um, in this parish alone, in the last, um, in, in 2022, we had like 94 births mains in this parish uh, alone. Um, in 2021, there were about 94 again. And then in 2019, we had about 100 and... 2022, sorry, 2022. 2022. Because far. <laughs> okay. But it, it just gives you an idea of the problem that we are having down here. We know, in, for example, in the Rockfield area, we, the main there is breaking frequently. We replace sections of it, but we still have to do um, a, a, a comprehensive replacement of the entire um, main down there. And we are going to be following, a, well, we are going to be going before the Ministry of Public Works um, doing the replacements, and then they, um, I believe they'll be following immediately after us to do the replacement or, or the, the rebuilding of the roads. Okay, can I continue? Yes, sir. Two points to note. The excavation of, of um, Lowlands Road was, the road was dug out and then it was left in that condition, I think for over, for over eight months. And as a result, my son's car, when enter the the ditch, and we, we had to get a wrecker to remove it, and that caused significant damage to the car. Finally, that was a point to note. And, and the final point. I think you know that I can't practice law as Prime Minister, so I know <laughs> you can do what you got to do. <laughs> Finally, and this is for the transport and works. During the excavation for the relaying of mains, my landmark was uprooted. I need that. Landmark, it was there uh, now for... No problem, for, for I don't need you to share that with the whole six, country. About six months. What I do need you to do is to make sure you go to the table to your right and make sure that Mr. Morris and his crew have a proper note of it. Every, fine. But I also want you, Roy, to have a record of it because when we start to review, as we do monthly, what we followed up on with people that we're in a position to say mission accomplished or not, okay? So this, is not, this meeting is not just about the talk, it's also about the follow-up. And that's why for the first time this country has a director of citizen engagement with a small team of people to make sure, because you all don't know how much letters my offices get when we come. Hundreds, okay? And I need to make sure that we're then in a position as far as possible to follow up. So okay? look forward to the reinsertion of that landmark that as, without uh, as soon without as without a doubt, possible. Mr. Trudeau is not in, so without a doubt, just go to the one side and, and let them have the details. And I would, Mr. Trudeau, can we get that done within two to three months, please? And not putting an unreasonable time on you. Details. No, thank you, Shanta. It's still there, that it's still on by the side of the road that anybody can see. It's that's still, cool. That's it's still cool. There. That's cool. We can get through. Okay. All right, Mr. Phillips. Thank you very much. Lord bless you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next one. Who's next? Um, my name is Faith Broom. I live right down the hill, Hannah's Road. Um, my name is Faith Broom. Y'all can hear me now? All right. Great. Um, my problem is more, it's not dealing with like roads or anything, is services and information offered in government offices. I recently graduated from Cuba in the year 
that passed. Go ahead, speak into the mic a little louder so everybody can hear. You recently graduated from Cuba. Yes, ma'am. What, what you went to do? Medicine. Medicine, so you're one of the ones affected. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and tell the rest, let them know the battles that we're trying to fight for you. Go along. Right. Well, I didn't plan to get into all of that, but you heard her. But I need you to because I'm not a doctor, so I need all the help in being able to make the case. So you go ahead. Okay, so basically what we were told when we graduated is that for us doctors who, gra who studied in Cuba, we have to go through a couple of steps to be able to practice here as a licensed doctor. And one of these steps is to do an internship. An internship that currently all Bajan students studying in Cuba have to leave the country to do. Meaning that we, don't, we currently do not have a way to do it at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. That is one thing, I mean, everybody at some point, even people who study at UWE does leave the country at one point in time if they choose to do their internship. But my problem is, which brings me to tonight, is that we have to do a licensing exam. Everyone has to do a licensing exam. That is not the problem. We can choose to do the one for the Caribbean. We could choose to do the one for England, or we could choose the one to do for America. I am currently trained to do the one for the Caribbean. My problem is, is that when I am trying to find the information on how to register and the dates for the exam, it is not there. I went on the website, the website is outdated. Breaking news on the website was 2018. This who, um, health um, or who? Health. This is which well, part? Well, no, the website I was talking about is the website for the CAMC exam, which is the Caribbean Association Medical. So it's not government of Oh, no, 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 I come into that, no. No, I know, but just. No, 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 that's for Ma'am, I'm trying to solve problems. So oh, I yeah, that only one solve is for it the by exam. recording and understanding. So just take yeah. time. Yeah. Because if we got to deal with CAM, was it CAM? See, that's CAM the registration body, yes. which is the regional registration body mm -hmm. for medicine. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So the CAM C website it's was outdated. dated in 2018. Mm -hmm. Good on. So I sent an email, which is the logical thing to do because I can't call Jamaica, and I received no response. My next train of thought was to call the corresponding ministry, which is the Ministry of Health, to find out if somebody there would know the dates for the exam and how to register for the exam and how to, you know, do everything I need to do. However, two weeks ago, I tried to call the Ministry of Health every single day, several times a day, and nobody was picking up the phone. The first thing I would always do is try the PBS line, which they said you're supposed to call so that they could direct you to the correct department. So we have a problem with people answering calls. Yeah, they don't which answer why, their phones. Which is why we told everybody back to work come January 1, so all of the at-home work would stop. Go ahead. Yeah, so they don't answer their phones. Two weeks straight, I called. Today, I got fed up, and I called every single number listed on the Ministry of Health website. I got through around 10 o'clock this morning to the office of the chief medical officer. I would assume that the chief medical officer, his office would at least know a little something, even the date for the exam. When I talked to the lady, the lady told me that that is not the jurisdiction or the Ministry of Health, that is the Ministry of Education because that it is an exam. That is not true, not even tertiary. But, but that. not only that, let me pause you. The Ministry of Health is not Tanzania and the Ministry of Education, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. They all belong to a country called Barbados. True. Okay? And I hear you, and it is what we're trying to fight because there's a culture. You know the Shaggy culture? You know who Shaggy is? Yes, ma'am. I'm learning that a lot of young people don't know songs that I know, so I guarantee if you're old. The shaggy culture, is, it wasn't me. Yeah. It wasn't me. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to change the shaggy culture to, is all of we? <laughs> you know the Peter Ram song? Yeah. All of we? Yeah. So I'm trying to change from the shaggy culture to the Peter Ram culture. Because whether it is education or health okay. should not matter. And the first thing you see me doing you see a pencil break since I talking here tonight. I had to send for another one to another phone to work, to write. Mm -hmm. 
Because separate from what Roy and his people write, I keep my notes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it matters that we build trust in this country. Yes. So, my father taught me many years ago that you're not to walk wrong and know the law. You to know where to find the law. Mm -hmm. And I'm not asking any receptionist or any secretary or any official in this country to know all answers in the top of the head because the truth is a lot happening. Mm -hmm. A lot happening. But you must always know where to find it mm -hmm. and be committed to get back to a person. The gentleman met me in here when I came. You saw me go back out with him when he first came in. And he was asking me something about the port and water and D1 and D2 lines where you are, star. You ask me about D1 and D2 lines and the port, and I tell you what, that's above my pay grade. Let me find out. Mm -hmm. And I call them outside with my pay to take the information because we're going to call him back and give him the information. So mm -hmm. without you doing more, because a lot of people want to speak tonight, I can tell you that I apologize on behalf of both ministries. And well, I, no, you don't have to apologize for the Ministry of Education because mm -hmm. although I received a lot of bounce back between mm -hmm. the two, mm -hmm. the Ministry of the Education were the ones who were actually trying to find somebody who would help me. Well, I'm glad it to is hear the that. The Ministry of Health is proving to be a problem. The level of ignorance that was displayed this morning was frustrating. It was a depression, yeah, let, a depressing let's, situation. Let's give people the benefit of the doubt and I say would like the to, inability but to respond. I would like to, I've been fighting it for two weeks now and that it always seems to be a problem. It's frustrating because I am working with a deadline that I do not know and that is because people Did you find do... out the deadline though? No. Okay, well, my office can find out for you tomorrow, Roy. First thing tomorrow morning, please. Thank you. I'm so sorry that you have to come to a town hall meeting to speak to a prime minister to find out a deadline for an exam. Thank you. I'm sorry. You have a good day. And I um, hope that you will be very successful. I hope so, too. Thank Take you. Take care. Hmm. Next person. Um, Mr. Abrams has joined us. He's the acting attorney general, so he will be able to help feel some of these legal issues. Thank you. Go ahead. Good night. Um, my concern, I have several concerns, but... What's your name, Dev? <laughs> my name is Nadine Broome. Nadine? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Where are you from? Yeah. Um, Hannah's Road, St. Lucie. Tonight is a broom night. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, I have several concerns, but... I was told that one can be day. I can discuss that with you, not for everybody to hear, but it's two that I would discuss right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Mr. Phillips was trying to help me out in the fact that he put me on a program with the BADMC, where we were allotted some land. I got a plot in Mount Poya. Um, the acre that I got, my son got one next to me. What happened now is that we... I ain't going to that either, but I, plan, I spent several thousand dollars planting some cassava and some sweet potatoes. But it happened that the guy above me, he was praying. And every time I go back, everything dead. And it, is, it gets so frustrating. And the, the, where I get the plot of land, it is a place by a well and a gully. And if my one out there, it was frightening for me. So I decide I ain't going back out there because nobody killing me. So I decide now that I, can, I call back the people at, at BADMC and I talk to them. So after much arrangement, they told me to write a letter stating that I would like a different place to work. I did that. Then there's this particular man. He called me and told me he don't have any more available plots anywhere else, which I know was not so because my brother get one and several other people get after me. So I was very annoyed about that. So I done with that. So then they called me several weeks back and told me. No, I'm done with that. So you need to be a Jimmy Cliff girl like me. How tell me. You can get it if you really want, but you yeah, must try and try it. and try. BADMC, talk I to me. I am doing it. I am doing it. 
do anything. I ain't frightened for them. I can do it. Because you know why? I sign my name up and I pay for Mount Paya. And I would let her understand that somebody is working it. But they're going to go to go to me, call me, they're going to go it. Because honest, my name up on the paper. How can some person that's working it? I want you to go it with nobody because there's a place nowadays where gotten it with people is lead to trouble. I know. So what I want I you like to trouble. do, you do the right thing. I like trouble. You come in here, you're talking with me. Uh -huh. Mr. Ennis, when you finish talking, the answer, and the two of y'all are going to meet tomorrow in Mount Poirier. Uh -huh. and, and I'm telling you, in some instances, because sometimes I've Mount learned, Poirier? as I said, that there are always three sides to a story. So yeah. I give you all the chance to go one side eventually and resolve it. But at least we have sight and knowledge of it. Yeah. And we will yeah. follow through on it and make sure, Roy, that the issues are resolved. But yeah. go ahead. Yeah, my problem was then that they made arrangement with me then, the land where I live. That was the first thing I really wanted was to help to get my land work up that it be near me because my back would get hurt in an accident. So the, the guy, Mr. Rogers, he came and he looked at the land and everything was good. They would come and help me clear the land and help me get it plugged up and everything. That was last year, early last year. But every time I call, the people don't answer the phone. Did they tell me that he's not answering the phone? The, per the party is not answering, so nobody don't answer at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. And it just frustrated me that these people are getting paid and they are not doing the work because you should be there to answer the phone to tell me what you want to know. Don't make arrangements to me and then back up on me because it's not good, it's not fair to me because I want to help my daughter that was just here speaking. I want to help her because I'm the only, she, I'm the only person that she has. And if I am working and she ain't getting no work out for her hard or the two of us, so I, I need you. it Look, I need it done. Madam, I hear you. And and what I want you to do, Mr. Ennis, um Monk Poya is important to me. Yeah. And in February of last year, I met with the Minister of Agriculture and with the team from BADMC in Monk Poya. And is Nicole here? Nicole is at the back, she will tell you and that we indicated that we want to be able to expand the acreage under production at Monk Poya as a matter of urgency. We also have spoken to the BWA, the Water Authority, and they are waiting Mr. Burton Ward's drilling in order because he is confident, but he needs to prove it now with the drilling, that there is greater access to water up there than we have previously seen and that further out by Bobron, there's a pond by Bobron where people used to shoot ducks. Huh? And that there's water out that side too, which can help with Spring Hall. And that we should look and drill for water in both of these areas before trying to put together a pond that the Ministry of Agriculture wanted to do that would have captured about what? How many million gallons? How much? 40 million gallons. And what they're saying basically is that you're going to spend the money on a dry pond if you try to build out that pond for the 40 million gallons. Let us spend the time drilling to see if we can get the water out by Mount Poirier and where the water out Bobron side is coming from. It is taking longer than I am happy for, and these gentlemen here know that. But by the same token, we have to give them the time to bring back the scientific the drilling results, and then from there we will have a clearer plan. We have also, as you know, been using Spring Hall from the days of Tom Adams. Yeah. Right, Lyman? And Johnny Cheltenham and Owen Arthur, with the, who was chair of the ADC at the time. It is clear to me that there may be aspects of Spring Hall that may also need revisiting to better suit today's needs in terms of food security. And the last point I want to make is to, that even though we feel St. Lucie got enough land, Barbados needs to start looking more at vertical agriculture too that will allow us to be able not only to produce for ourselves alone but to also export. Our problem is smallness. And if we focus on the Barbados market alone rather than focusing on agro-processing and export, right now you've got 27 flights a week minimum that's go to the UK and 27 flights a week that's go to the US and elsewhere flights to Ireland, Netherlands, and Germany during the winter. So that if we can start doing some agro-processing. When I was a child, as a young student, 
you went in Selfridges in London. They had a trademark sweet potatoes, and then they had another trademark Barbadian sweet potatoes. And you paid a premium for Barbadian sweet potatoes. And if we can, therefore, that's why I told you that we brought this lady to help us. If we can work to reposition, not just only with what we produce in Barbados, but what I can import from northern Brazil and what I can import from the rest and have a proper agro-processing facility, which we are working towards, and a proper fish processing facility. Africa imports $4.5 billion a year in fish, but only 1% come from the Caribbean. And yet they have people importing fish from the U.S. and Europe who are buying it from Thailand and Vietnam and just repackaging it. That makes sense to you? When you come across on the Middle Passage? No, my brother. So, Mr. Ennis, please. Hi. All right. Good night. And thank you, Ms. Broom. I think we have a little history in terms of the challenges you would have had at Mount Poya. At this point, I know that at the time you would have had your initial concerns about the location, they would have been an issue because other persons had just been placed. I think at this point, we have gone through some changes at the location, so there may be a few lots that are now becoming open or as a result of that. So I think we can have a conversation after as a separate uh, discussion in terms of what might be possible. But in terms of the preparation of the lands close to you, I think on your uh, property, um, I know the challenge we would have had is access to the equipment. We've actually lost one of our tractors, unfortunately, just uh, at the beginning of December. Uh, because of a, a manufacturer's default. So right now we are working with just two tractors, but we actually have the tractors in St. Lucie this week. So I'm going to see if we can have a conversation separate and see how we can actually maybe have them come to your well, Mr. Ennis, you know they've got other tractors in government too. <laughs> yes, ma'am. No, and true. I, and this notion that this territorial thing, and you all hear me now, between education and health, between... BADMC and Soil Conservation and MTW, there has to be an MOU, Rommel, between all the ministries that do infrastructure and works. In any event, government is going to transfer ownership of all the equipment to UCAL, which is a company owned by ordinary Barbadian mechanics. And why? Because we're going to lease it back. But the best body to know whether a piece of equipment working or not is who? The mechanic. So that they're going to make sure that the equipment that they got working and we can pay for working equipment and they will make money and we will get work done. Agreed? Yes. So, so please let me help you tomorrow access and make sure that soil conservation or MTW or whoever got the equipment in government, SSA, whoever, that you can lend you for a day or two to supplement what your two tractors doing until you can get a new piece. Thank you. Ms. Broom, thank you. Yes, ma'am, and I was about to tell him that even on my property, there is a pawn. Was there before my great, 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 great grandmother there? It always full of water right in my yard. I can't walk to my yard too far because I will fall in. So they can make use of that water too because. The right Lord now, bless you. They're sending it out to the white men that they shoot the birds. I realize they're coming and getting drainage out there. All oh, looking in the old yard, out my fire. But nobody can come and help me to get the same water to work my land. I don't understand what's really going on. The, so, there may be enough for your land and other people's land. People, so could I ask between else, BADMC and Water Authority to, to examine the, the pond, pond in my yard. by you and see what's possible? But I don't trample my plants when I'm going to come through, though. No, no, no. You don't make sure of that, darling. Let, let, let's move to the next person now. No, it was one more issue. Sure let's to... go quickly because right, we, we have me, others me. to talk. The other thing I'm talking about quickly is the bus service Sp for St. Lucy Church. Bus we, service to St. Lucy Church? We only have the quarter to church, St. Lucy Church, but it's not a next. And when I called the man, I had to give up a job. And when I called the man at transport board and asked him for the bus, he, tell, he laughed bad and told me only quarter to six from town that evening. And a lot of people be risking the life have to walk across that road because years back you I lose a cousin and get killed going out behind the school. So right now I think you need to address the San Lucy Church bus. We need it okay. urgently. Well, luckily for you, the general manager, the transport board just walked in. We Fabian, to come, because we come really forward, start your walking just in time. He must be the one that laugh at me the other night when they called. <laughs> you must <laughs> smell him walking in. I feel like he, I feel like he, <laughs> Come, Fabian. 
they got mic here for you. And, and also, the camera's that way, so you can look back and talk, address them. Thank you. Look, uh, thank you, Madam Prime Minister. Good night to everyone. Um, yes, we are aware. There is, there was a 540, I think it was, 20 to 6 in Bone St. Lucie Church. And then there's a 1745 and a 615 that's supposed... All right, just help me, just help me. Um, that is supposed to go in the evening, not in the morning, in the evening. Just help me out, just help me out. Just let me finish the point. Um, me then, want me then. So you are correct that there are some challenges. I'm, going to, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that, that the challenge does not exist. I am going to be very straight up with you. We have a situation at the transport board where the northern and the St. Andrew part, St. Lucie, St. Andrew, and those rural districts, which are only serviced by the transport board, uh, primarily are our number one priority. What has happened is that with the, we have a limited amount of resources, okay? So we, had a, we have a situation where at this moment, we are looking at it to see how we can address it because it came up yesterday. Yes, yesterday is Sunday. We talk on Sundays too. Um, we spoke about it, part, not because of the meeting, but because we were looking at the northern routes where we were having holes. Now, because we had to use additional resources as a result of what is happening with the bridges in St. Andrew, we are now deploying way more buses into that St. Andrew corridor than we would be able to, that we would have normally deployed. We are at the stage where there is going to be some relief, hopefully soon, as it relates to that routing. There is some work that's being done where that road is going to be soon addressed. We are then going to move back those resources to allocate for the St. Lucie Church bus. So, one of, so what we had to do, I, 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 I am not going to say this to you. I'm not saying that we don't understand. I'm just saying it's a case where we had to look at the routes. We had to look at the holes. We recognize that there's a walk from Hannon's and those places that people have to take. I am sorry. But, but, but let me help you too, yes. Fabian. Because the, the, some of the bridges open back next week, Rommel. Yes, correct. So St. Andrew will be able to release some buses to St. Lucy? Yes, yes. Oh, Because you see, honestly, in fairness, a lot of the bridges in St. Andrew had to be done either because they were unsafe or impossible. All these people around me make noise with St. Andrew because St. Andrew ain't got no bridges done in how long? Too long. 50, 60 years, 70 years. So the first set will finish next week. Next week. Yeah. Talk. Well, let, let him finish first. Let him finish. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to, 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 tell, to tell you that um, we have had the closure of two bridges, the Borden's Bridge and the Thompson Bridge. But working with our technical staff, we have, we have determined that we can reopen the Borden's Bridge to all traffic, including um, public service vehicles. So that should, ease, that should give some ease to the transport board because they would have had to put in a number of buses in there to service the various routes that were disrupted because of the closure of the bridge. But we are working to have that bridge reopen as early as next week. We would have done some tests on it to ensure that the road was fit for purpose. And we're gonna, just gonna complete those tests and give permission to the uh, transport board to allow buses to, to cross over that, that temporary road. And that would free up at, 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 least, at, least, three, at least three buses. All right, so you can look forward to that. Of course, we apologize for the situation in, in the north. Mm -hmm. um, we know that we have a shortage of, shortage of resources. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's difficult to appreciate that the transport board does not have as many buses as it would like, but that is the reality as it, is, as it stands today. But we're doing our best. Sir, I understand what you're saying, but why you had to take the buses from St. Lucie to St. Andrew? They got so many purchases in this place, small Barbados. You go any the bus stop and then you see so many short road buses moving. Well, let, let me explain, no, Ms. Broom. Ms. Broom. All of them moving really Hold fast. Ms. Broom. Ms. Broom, let me explain. You see why they say the transport board service in the north? Fabian, tell them why. Why? 
because the last government mm -hmm. increased the number of privately owned licenses from just under 375 or 400 to now over 750 people. So the last government effectively privatized transport in this country. But there was one problem. They privatized it without proper regulation. Because, and I don't know if it's explained. So it meant, and Fabian can give chapter and verse because he know the sector backwards. So it meant that all the private people get the short routes that are profitable. And who get the long route that, that, that don't make no money? Only government. So hold on, I ain't quarrel. I come in. In the middle of an IMF program, last government in by a single bus. Not a single bus. That's still good, yeah. You understand? And even the government that I was part of had not bought a bus for the last three, four years, the last time round. And we come in and we buy 49, 49 electric buses. Now, electric bus costs about two to three times more than a normal diesel bus. But you know where we buy it? Because when you got the electric bus, Fabian, you don't got the same moving parts and all the mechanical problems that you got with the diesel buses and the combustion engines. Mm -hmm. So what have we been discussing with Fabian? He got about how much more that are diesel there? About 30? No, we have about 60, 70 still. 60, 70. Mm -hmm. But we've said, look, just as we allow the TAP program to come and we gave the bus drivers from the transport board the right, because you will be surprised a private man or a driver will come and take a bus. And a bus that might last two years for the transport board and last so long for that private man, Alex? Ten. About 10. You understand? Because they're going to have a different approach to keeping it. Mm -hmm. So we have said we're getting another 10 buses under the IDB Smart Energy Program. That coming shortly. And then I said to Fabian, go and look and buy another 20 or so. Okay? Because that will be roughly another 15 million. But you know what he saves then? He saved diesel. He saved maintenance. He saved, and right now your diesel bill and your maintenance bill and everything has come to how much a year? About 15 million. And you know how much revenue the transport board is getting a year? Fabian, tell them. Overall, 24, 25, but that, that, not even fully. Because some of that is charter, but it's not normal bus work. So when you look at normal bus work, it barely makes what you need to pay for the diesel and the mechanical work. And that's why we decided, look, government will find the debt space to borrow $15 million more to buy another 20 buses. So when you take the 10 from the IDB, which we are paying for still, but that coming differently, plus the 20, 21 in fact it worked out too, we will have 80 electric buses hopefully by the end of the year, early next year. So they are now putting in the orders for those. It means that those of the diesel buses that are still good, that can go to drivers, that will be transferred for them with drivers too. And in some instances, we've done a lot of the mechanical work to bring it up to par. It is just a transfer. So what I'm trying to tell you, honestly, is that we inherit a transport board that was popped down. Bus fares were not increased in 20-something years. Not a single bus was bought in 15 years. We've come in. We've bought 49 electric buses with Wi-Fi and air conditioner. Huh? For everybody. We've put other buses back on the road because when we came back, they had very few diesel buses working. But we are not yet where we need to be. And if you give us another year or two, huh? only about 35 buses were working out of all them 80, 100, 110 that they had. That was supposed to be rolling stock and 200 pound transport board property. I don't know what other than catching somewhere for rats together. We are not where we need to be. Okay. But we are getting there. Thank you. And regrettably, 
the private operators do not want to run the long routes, which is what pushes and puts us under pressure. But the government is adamant that there should be a flat fare for regardless of where you travel in this country. If not, it would always mean that the people who live in the country... Remember there was a time when you had stage fares? You remember that? And we are adamant, just as we believe in free education for your children, we are adamant that there should be a flat fare regardless of where you live. If not, what will happen? Everybody can start moving back to town again. That's why St. Lucy, St. Joseph, St. Andrew saw so many people leave the parishes to the point when you look at the voters' roll, you see how few people live in those areas as compared to others. Fabian, I don't know if you want to add to the other economics in the sector or industry, but it's over to you. I mean, th thank you, Prime Minister. I think you have, have summed it up very nicely. Um, I, I, and I just want to say to you, I have employees who live in St. Lucie. I have friends who live in St. Lucie. I have, I have came down here on many occasions since I came to the Transport Board with, with um, MP Phillips. I went around the areas. I understand. But as the Prime Minister said, just, just bear with us a little more. We are working hard on it. But you are a part of our priority one in terms of services. Okay, thank, thank you. you, sir. And I just hope that you will make us do the same with St. Lucie Church because we can't risk anybody getting killed again because it was very brutal that time. So try your best to see how fast we can get it done because we, as the ladies in Hannah's, in Swampy Town, and in France, we fear for our lives. Okay? So please try to make it as soon as possible. Okay? Will do. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for hearing thank me. You, thank you, Nadine. And I will keep an eye out. All right? Who's next? Um, I want to start by saying that. You know, thanks because, oh, well, my name is Melanie. I just want to start by saying thanks. I don't think that our country would have made it so far without the leadership that we've had. Um, but being... What's the last name again, Melanie? You know my last name. No, I know, it's but you it for the record. It's James. Um, but I am born and bred St. Lucy, and I have St. Lucy at my heart, even though I haven't been here for some time. But having come back and I look at my St. Lucy, I say that my St. Lucy is not my St. Lucy anymore. Because programs that we once had for youth, I no longer see. One meeting in the back, please, so that we can hear clearly. Thank you. Yeah, I no longer see programs for our youth like we had before. And coming up as a young person, there were always things that you can do, whether it was at the the pavilion in Chaka Hall or we had exchanges in Play Corner or wherever we went but there's no longer anything productive for the youth to do so I'm asking about that I'm just going to state all my things and then you could respond and secondly we had a conversation a year ago about the Arawak cement plant and uh, there's a diversion to the eye but the problem remains the same so the pollution level remains the same, is at ground level, and therefore it gets even worse to the communities around them. And my last point is housing for young people and how do young people go about getting affordable housing that you spoke about before. Thank you very much. Um, before Prime Thank Minister you. responds, just a reminder, folks, um, the chairs directly in front of me that are separated on both the left and the right are for persons who have registered to go to the microphone. So please, if you want to speak, please take, give us the courtesy of registering and then taking one of the eight seats in front of me. Thank you. Good evening to everyone, my sisters and my brothers. Um, I am- so Just hold a minute, ma'am. We're gonna do the response now, okay? And then we'll come to you, okay? So I you're next, but now. just let me uh, respond to Melanie. Okay, okay? thank you. Um, with respect to the absence of programming in St. Lucie, Melanie, regrettably, what I found was that when we came to office, there was no programming for sports and cultural training. In fairness, under John King, it was started back, and then boom, COVID came. We have asked, and everybody, in 2023, to submit to ensure that we have programming from St. Lucie to St. Philip again, St. John to St. James.
Because without the programming that we did in youth affairs and culture and sports, young people don't have the opportunity. Look at this hall. There are very few halls in the Caribbean that are as well equipped as this school hall. And at least once every three months, there should be concerts or plays, dance things in here. And that means making sure that we do the programming so that people can put on the productions for the people of the North. Secondly, with respect to Arawak, um, Mr. Phillips, Peter has told me that he had a meeting with the residents. I had asked him over the holidays to meet back because we got some complaints again. And I am going to await the formal report. Suffice it to say that Arawak gave us certain commitments last year. And we're talking to them about other things now, especially for a climate-friendly environment. Give us the opportunity to meet and get back to you, Melanie. And I think you know, we know where to find you and you know where to find us. With respect to housing for young people, we want to be able to do housing for young people, old people, middle-aged people, all kind of people. Because, regrettably, the country needs a silent revolution in housing, given the absence of houses that have been made available. Many of you heard last March, give me a chance out that side, please. Many of you heard last March when we agreed that every homeowner in Barbados should have access to renewable energy panels. And many of you know that the housing program that we have started is designed to do a number of things. One, cap the price of land. How many young people or even public servants, police, nurses, teachers, can afford to pay $25 a square foot for land? How many? Not at $2,700 and $3,000 a month. They can't do it. So you've got to cap the price of land, and the government has capped it in the whole program at no more than $12 a square foot. $12.50, sorry, a square foot. Two. You have to cap the price of the services. For you to build houses on land, you got to put in water, you got to put in roads, you got to put in gutters, you got to put in all of that. We've capped the price on that too to stop people from transferring that cost to increase the cost of land. And that is where MTW and others come in and hopefully the blended cost. Three, you know why we can cap the price of land? Because when others are asking for other things, we ask the private sector, you want to do big developments? Well, guess what? We need back something called a planning gain. Give us land for low and lower middle income housing in this country. So we've got 40 acres at Bright Hall here in St. Lucie coming. Not true? We've got 40 acres in Lower Burnie. We've got other land coming at Sears. Um, um, Searle, sorry, in Christchurch. We've got land in other parts of the country and coming close and trying to build up a land bank of at least 200 acres so that when we blend that with what the government already owns, we have Ginger, Ginger Works it was called, in St. Joseph. We also got planning gains land on that too. When you take all of the land that we get for free, and all of the land that we had and land that we need also, then you are in a position for us to be able to move and ensure that we can keep the cost of land affordable. But the third step was, thank you, the third, I'm going to let you speak to those advantage, those uh, movement. The third step was us saying as well, the cost of the property needs to be offset by the bounty of renewable energy. So if the renewable energy, and, and, and let me be clear, because the economists would tell me if I wanted to go for the cheapest source of energy, I would go for gas and heavy fuel. But when you get flooded out, out here again, what are you going to tell me? Or when you get a drought again, what are you going to tell me? So that we have to be able to do the thing that is sustainable as well. And in creating that sustainable platform for renewable energy, it may mean light with taxes, they just pay a little more taxes than most in the region. Why? Because you get free tertiary education. Your children can go to UE for free. Tell me how many countries in the region give your ch the children UE for free. Anybody know? Very few. You have the opportunity, even as bad as you may complain sometimes, 
to go to a polyclinic and to go to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And even though there may be problems, they still deliver excellent care to people with the nurses and the doctors that we got. Don't mean that it's perfect. And right now we have a group that came in to study accident and emergency to see how we can make that better in terms of its delivery to people. But the other thing that we have agreed to is that if we give everybody an opportunity to participate in the renewable energy bounty who is a homeowner, instead of the houses at Lancaster, I can't remember the exact figures, but if the house that you see there by Shafet in Lancaster was to cost, it was what, 240, 250,000? And the people getting it for 170 or 180 or something so. Why? Because they sign and assign the benefit of the roof to the Hope Company for the revenue for a 20-year period. And therefore, it was able to bring down the price to you as a purchaser. So, it's Melanie, more. what we are trying to do is to make the cost right. of housing affordable by looking at the price of land, by looking at the price of services, by looking at the cost of capital, and by looking at the other returns that you can get as a homeowner. And we are confident <coughs> that if we do that, recognizing that national housing, even after it cleaned up its list, has a waiting list of 15,407 people wanting housing. Now, as we wait for all of the other sectors to come back normal, this is what is going to stabilize our country. And even the persons who were ash workers or working at the NHC, when we say transition, and when we started construction gateway since May last year to train people, it is because if we don't train tradesmen in this country, what's going to happen? You've got to get them from somewhere. And at the end of the day, if you can build at least 2,000 houses a year, that is 150,000 on average. Some are going to be slightly less, some are going to be slightly more. That's $300 million in house activity, which means jobs. Which means the same fellow that got jobs, what's going to happen on a Friday when he get paid? He's going to put down money for your children. He's going to put down money to buy groceries. He might hold back a little bit for a little bottle because at the end of the week you need to do what? Breathe. And when he hold back that little bit, it means the shopkeeper doing what? Earning a little piece of change. The supermarket earning a little piece of change. The truck man that got to bring the goods from town, bringing down the goods, he earning a little piece of change. So that government's ability to stimulate a housing program is at the core, along with the renewable energy, as Kerry would tell you, and I'm going to let him speak to that too, is at the core of being able not only to stimulate this economy, but to give you as ordinary Bajans a chance. And why? We realized about two and a half years ago, three years ago, that the applications that are coming forward all come from the same handful of people for renewable energy. And I hide in my mouth. We pause it. Because if we didn't pause it, only a handful of people in this country would benefit. And we said, no. The sun don't belong to nobody. The wind don't belong to nobody. The ocean don't belong to nobody. And therefore, it has to be part of the patrimony of the country. In other words, fancy language, that everybody got a piece of it, a share in it. And therefore, it is up to the government to make sure that in the same way I ask you all to share a burden when we come in, when you hear me say share the bounty, this is what we mean. That you get a piece of the action too. You don't only want a piece of the rock, you want a piece of the action. And I hear you. And in order for that to happen, that is how we have to change policy and to give you an opportunity. But you got to use it when you get it too. So the new housing policy driven by renewable energy, the existing homeowners get a chance. And for those of you who are still renting and you say, well, nothing in for me, that ain't true. Because we've said that if there is to be battery storage, you can participate in shares in that. And when we go for the offshore wind, we're keeping some for you. And if we have to go for natural gas offshore, we can keep some for you and the oil company. So wherever there are opportunities, we carry you along. Even if you can't be, give us enough, we can start with you and get the rest overseas. Kerry? 
Thank you. Thank you, um, Prime Minister. And la not last Sunday, two Sundays ago, you would have heard or read that there was a joint branch meeting of the St. James branches. And what I'm going to share with you know, I got for that meeting because I wanted them to understand what's happened with the housing program in Barbados. So that's why we're showing it to the Prime Minister. So that across the island, and you can begin up in St. Philip, there's a place called Carpenter's Glade. Um, that was a project actually started in 2010, 2011 by the last government. A failed project. It started officially to take in people in 2016, but by that time, and the folks at National Housing will bear me out, you had all sorts of vines and things growing through the, the roofs and the, uh, the, the glass windows and things and break up the houses. A lot of it had to be started over. So you got 117 at Carpenter's Glade. That is, interestingly enough, just north of Dodd's Prison. Um, across, from, across from there, there is there are about 350 houses being done in Clifton. That is a work in progress. The, 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 the sites and services are going in. That means that the, 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 the roads are now being put in. Um, sorry? But I, I just carry you through the island. I just carry you through the island. I just carry you through. Obviously, all of the houses are not going to be built in St. Lucie. There are, it is an island-wide project. Come, 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 come. Want to just hear me talk about the Republic of Tanzania and the Republic of Zimbabwe? We happen to be in the Republic of Barbados. And he is showing you by way of example what we had to do to clean up when the last government left a barrel of houses that were shut up for how long? Okay? What we are also doing is building houses to be able to deal with the people who were squatting next to the airport who were living on a garbage dump. Anybody know why? Because what happens when you live on a garbage dump? You can have internal combustion that will cause fires. So that the first thing we got to do in this country is to protect what? Human life. And then we do others. But in spite of that, I just told you that 40 acres was coming where? I can't hear where Bright Hall is? Oh, just checking. Go along. So outside of the 40 acres in Bright Hall, I had 350 that are being built in St. Philip. No, there's another 300 that are also being built there. Prime Minister just talked about Rock Hall. That's the place where you're moving the people off the dump. There's another 227. All these are in progress. So we are up to now to 3, 6, 800 and somebody. You have Aline Squirt, which was only 20. You have the East-West Steel, um, like East-West Project. That East-West Project is seeing, uh, pardon? Yeah, right, that is going island-wide. There are 150 of them, which will be completed, or scheduled to be completed by March. Another, yeah. March, of, well, the, the, this, is the, this is the information I get from National Housing. And then another, another 350 Atlantic Breeze, which are being built. That's Chancery Lane. That, that, that carries us already to over 1,000 houses which are being worked on at this point. And the, 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 the connection between that and the renewable energy, you need to understand. Because we deliberately created a policy which would allow all homeowners to have access to renewable energy on a fast track basis so that you are taken out of the line of applications where the fellas who want to have a megawatt or, or 500 kilowatts or whatever of power being generated and you sit down, you waited. There were people in Barbados who waited for eight and nine months with an application. We have said, no, that can't work. You get, uh, uh, if you want to have between, let us say 2.5 kilowatts and 10 kilowatts at your house, not saying you can't get more, but if that is what you, up to that level you want at your house, then you are immediately given a fast track approach and you can apply online. Your response comes back to you online within the space of about five, 10 minutes you have given your, you have, you have been given your clearance to proceed to start to put yourself in order to put the thing on your roof. That is the only 
system of its kind to be found anywhere in the Caribbean. Anywhere in the Caribbean. And we put it in place to correct a problem. Minister Abrams was once a minister of energy. He would tell you, when we inherited the government, we had the situation where ordinary people in Barbados, instead of waiting for a five minute to get their application cleared, were waiting for over five months. Thank you. Um, Peter, you wanted to speak just to add with the others in St. Lucie that you've been working on for housing. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Yes, we have housing also going on. The, we have heard about the project at Colleton, and that was a project that has started from over about four years or so, but that project has actually now restarted, and the work is being done on that. We also have um, the houses at Coconut Hall. That's about houses and lots. That's about 20, 22 or so. So we're doing... Somewhere along with Bright Hall, as you heard the Prime Minister mentioned, which is some 40 acres, which would be low income housing, um, lower to middle income housing, which we are doing rent to own. You are doing some for, for to persons to be able to purchase and so on. So we are bringing, because housing, we have not had housing in St. Lucie for some time outside of Mount, of Mount Poya. Mount Poya was the last, the last, the last, ho the last um, development that we had. So all these are projects that we're working on, and within the next year or two, we should be able to see some real progress in the housing, in housing development in St. Lucie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, who's next? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Good Mary night. Springer, and I am from Josie Hill, St. Lucie. I want to What's address your first name again, sir? Mary Springer. Mary Springer, thank yeah. you. Yeah, Josie Hill, St. Lucie. I'm here as a voice for my people in Josie Hill. And I want to address um, Mr. Phillips. But before I do that, the Honorable Prime Minister, it used to be uh, Dominic Barbados sweet potatoes, then London. Now we are getting Jamaica sweet potatoes. You either get the Jamaica as sweet as the Bajan ones. No. Exactly. Uh, you either get the Jamaican sweet potatoes or you get the African sweet potatoes, which very watery. Yeah. But I still buy them. But, yeah. but you like the Bajan one best? Of course, of Thank course. Thank you. We can course. get back yeah. there because right yeah. now the Ministry of Agriculture mm. is reviewing a program for major exports of sweet mm. potatoes in the next year again. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. hopefully we'll get back yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you, though, for yeah. Yeah, we have, sharing. Yeah, we have touched about um, rose... <laughs> and transportation, that is um, government transportation. But Mr. Phillips, I'm pleading with you, please come to Joe's the Hill, where I live. The roads are bad. I mean, very, very bad. And my neighbor, he went into a crater, because I don't call them potholes anymore. That's a crater. And he fell off his bicycle. On his face, he could have broken his neck. But he brought his nose instead, and all his forehead, and he done nothing about it. I said to him, you are responsible for that, uh, for himself. Go and do something about it. I don't know if he done anything about it, but it's very bad. I know, Mr. Phillips, you have done a lot for St. Lucy, because in the early, well, when I said a lot, the, the things that he have done, in the early days of the pandemic, even my family, they got help. I was told that people got uh, vouchers to go into the supermarket. Even here at this school, you could come and pick up boxes of food, at least a box per family. So you have done that. But the roads are very, very bad. I've got a friend of mine from Canada, a couple. I said, do not come to my house. I am ashamed of the road. People giving me a ride home, I said, drop me off at a certain spot. Because up by me is so bad. If you take your vehicle up there, you're going to have to work on it, and it's going to cost you money. Do not go up there with your vehicle. I get off at a certain spot, and I walk the rest. I am ashamed. I've got a friend from England who is here right now. I said, if you want to come, you can come to my house. But the road is bad. Mind you, I'm telling you, be aware of it. Yes, and transportation, uh, Mr. Phillips. 
um, maybe, Josie maybe, Hill. Maybe just be, just before you move on, let me respond mm. to the um, to the rose issue. The and I know you're speaking from the Salvation Army going back really, up to the, really to, the to the back of around. Jose. Well, yeah. Correct, correct. And um, we spoke, and I today spoke with the senior um, the tech officer, and we are going. To be, I told you that we are going to be coming. Yes. I'm going to come with him. I'm not going to come alone because I'm not a road technician. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring the people at the Chance Hall Depot to look at it, and I have I I I know exactly what you're talking about, so that we can see what we have what has to be done to fix yes. it. Yeah. Apart from that, then there's the other junction from right there by by, by Philippi Pentecostal Church, right down to um, Rock Hall, down to to yeah. Hill. Mm -hmm, that is on a program, the residential. Mm -hmm. Antenna Chiros, we have a litigation program by the Ministry of Transport and Works. And we have um, Mr. Tudor here. And I want Mr. Tudor to get up and speak to this. You know, we talked about this when I, when I was in the ministry, sir. Share with the people. Four. <coughs> you can't. All right. As part of our program, you would have seen that Fastic Village was started today by Infro. We also have um, Crab Hill to Archers Bay. That contract is soon to be awarded. Josie Hill through Mount View to Chance Hall. That contract too will soon be awarded. So those are broad um, jobs that um, will soon be started up. Jilks Road, uh, we did some work there, but we have to go back and, and finish off that. Hope Bridge Road, well, Water Authority is there now. When Water Authority finishes its work, we will move in and do Hope Bridge Road and, and the bridge itself. Friendly Hall, Oxford Road, and Mount Vu Road will also be resurfaced, but this will take place in the new financial year, sometime in April um, this year, right? Because I don't want to create false expectations. No, ma'am. All of the roads that you have mentioned are down to start when? Given the fiscal limitations, when are they down to start, please? Well, as I said, um, we want to start the Josie Hill to. Well, we have to send out uh, to get quotations from the contractors first mm -hmm. that is being done. So, Josie Hill, to Mount Hall, to Mount View, and the other one is Scrap Hill to Archers Bay. We are sending up quotations now to see how much money um, it's going to take. I don't know if you want me to tell you approximately. Josie Hill to Mount View. Josie Hill mm -hmm. through Mount View mm -hmm. to Chance Hill. To Chance Hall. Oh, Chance Hall, sorry, Chance Hall. And then Crab Hill. And then Hill. Crab Hill to Archers Bay. To Archers Bay. Yeah. And the point is, Mary, that these the reason why I asked them is to identify the year because that will tell you whether it is this year's work or down the line. And once they go to tender, that will be this year's work. Correct. What else you were calling? Another one? You said um, Fastic started this week? Fastic started today. Today. Right. right. Now, the good thing about um, the roads in St. Lucie or the underlying um, surface in St. Lucie, as I understand from Mr. Patrick here. One meeting. Those roads are fairly hard. So it's just be a matter of milling and paving those, those roads and improving up so the drainage. So that's a good foundation. Correct. St. Lucie has a better foundation than most. Correct. St. Andrew and St. Joseph, the land shifting. The St. Lucie, the land solid. Right. The hardest rock to be found in Barbados is found in the parish of St. Lucie. There's no doubt about it. Right? That's why we have quarries now established um, various parts of St. Lucie that we'll take the stone from and build the roads using, um, using that material. Um, only the small roads program, I don't know if you wanted me to talk about that. We of course, have, Mr. Trudeau, thank you. Lord we, bless you, please. Small have, roads program. Small roads program. We have Allendale, Greenwich's, Coles Cave, Well Road, and Bishop Road. Bishop Roads. Those will all be started under the small roads um, program, uh, which were. Peter says? Hold on, Allendale's, Greenwich's. Allendale, Allendale Greenwich's, mm -hmm. Coles Cave, Well Road, and Bishop's Road. Um, in addition, PDCs is being prepared for paving. Um, hopefully, which one? P 
Peter says. Mm -hmm. Right. Peter says, what do you mean? Right, it has to be prepared for paving. Uh, by, <laughs> by the end of February, it should be paved. By the end of February, it And you be call the small roads program what I call my tenantry program, or that's a different one? That is your tenantry pro program. Exactly, so yeah. that's what we get in the short roads. Correct. Which means that Peter has room for a few more. <laughs> Right. Huh? Thank you. They just wanted to val validate because you will get a few more. Right. All right. Can All right, Mary, you can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Three main roads in Josie Hill. We have the Peterson's you just mentioned. Then there's a the road coming where the bus turns around and comes up by me, which is a cul-de-sac. And then we have a road going down Free Hill. There's a nursing home. So all three of those roads are in bad, bad condition. But up by me is the worst. We hear you, and yeah, you can yeah. see that we started. Yeah, yeah. So Peter will come yeah. with the MTW people. Yeah, yeah. They'll make sure they see you, but you can see yeah. that the government is bringing a credible program mm. to play mm -hmm. with respect yeah. to the roads. Yeah. Okay? So Honorable um, Prime Minister and Mr. Peter Phillips, I hope that when the mains, the water mains are being fixed and the roads are being fixed, that the Josie Hill bus can come up by me because they got to walk about 10 minutes walk with heavy bags. And there are not many elderly people, yeah, but yeah. people need to have transportation Absolutely. in that area. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that'd be okay. very nice. Thank you I very thank much. You. Thank you, Mary. Oh, who's next? Um, well, the next person is coming. Can I see the hands of all who have registered but are not sitting over here so we can get an idea of how many people? All right, so as the seats in this line here become vacant, please move into them. But just recognize who was there before you so that there is some order. Just like how we do it in the barber shop. Good evening. My name is Esther Jackman and I'm from Hope Road, St. Lucie. And I need to speak about the garbage collection. This is four weeks. We have not had a collection. The dogs are dragging the garbage because the cans are full. They're dragging them across the road, all across the pasture. I had to clean up on Sunday. Then the grass, the debushing program, the people I call Chancel and I explained to them. They need to put two sets of people together, one coming up Spring Hall Road, one coming down from the Adventist Church, round the bend. The grass is too high. People that walk on mornings, they don't go down now, they go up River Bay or across Flatfield side. And then the roads, well, everybody's talking about the roads, so the road from Spring Hall right up. They have cans in the road. They had a big pothole, well, I think I, somebody said they've patched it down by the hope. And the cans are just in the holes. Nobody's coming to fix the water problem that was there. They just dig up, put the cans in, and leave them. And the bus. This morning, we usually get a 7.30 Connetown bus. This morning, we were quarter to 8. We were still at the corner, staying up. They have yellow buses licensed for Connell Town. The smaller vans, they pick up people coming up, so therefore when they get in Hope Road, they're full. So you're staying up there. You can't bum a lift because nobody since COVID ain't really giving you lifts. And when you go into town, you can't get home. You gotta wait three and four hours for a bus. You can't get out of Hope Road, or you can't get from, if you get out of Hope Road, you can't get back. I hear you, ma'am, and look, 
everybody is making the same point vis-a-vis -vis roads. I asked Peter, how many roads get doing St. Lucie in the last 25 years, 30 years? <laughs> he, uh -uh, he tell me which one, husbands? <laughs> Little bit of husbands, one or two others. And then you had some short concrete roads because I know Owen Arthur started the concrete road program in St. Lucie, but it didn't get much. Which one was that? Ellis Road. So I want you all to hear because we need to listen to ourselves. If you were in charge of a house and you ain't do no maintenance for the house for 25, 30 years, then you all of a sudden you can't pass it over to your sister or brother to take care. And all of a sudden your sister or brother trying hard to do all, but the cumulative lack of maintenance and ignoring. And, and, and that's the point I heard and, and made an exchange with you all as I moved through St. Lucie last year, you know. Because with the best will in the world, I would like to do like Elizabeth and Bewitch and do so and twiggle my nose and fix it. But you're dealing with a country that is also... And uh, uh, Mr. Tudor, tell them why I asked you all for our estimates that you all got to give me this Thursday. An audit of all of the potholes in the country. We had four... No, no, no. Let me stop. Because you're talking about potholes now, but potholes was worse when we take over. And the amount of roads... I want you to do a list of all of the roads that we have done in the last four and a half years. But if things were bad from the start, it bound to be bad and worse as time goes on. And what we have been doing is clawing back, clawing back. But with the best will in the world, you can't get to all at the same time. And that's why I said and asked Mr. Tudor to list off the roads. So when he starts to do, Fustic Village start today. But a month ago, the people out by Fustic Village would have been quarreling too, not true? The people in Josie Hill, you just hear Mary. But Mary, three or four or six months from now, hopefully we won't hear you. Crab Hill to Archers Bay. You understand? They got others down there quarreling. But in six months to 12 months, hopefully we won't hear them. I just want us to understand that because government appears to be large and huge, it doesn't mean that government can get everything done at once. But we're going to do it. And we're going to do it because even as you pay your taxes, we're trying to use them in a way that you can see. Because you're getting drainage done. You get reservoirs done that weren't done before in 70, sorry, 90 years for half, half, what? half acre and 50 years for Bosco Bell. You're getting the mains replaced. Not as fast as you would like, but they've started. You're getting Archer's Bay done up. You're getting the, the playing fields done. All will happen. And above all else, not through your fault of your own, we had to spend millions of dollars at Harrison's Point and at the district hospital because of what? COVID. COVID. So all I'm saying is, hold tight. Hold tight. Because we're going to do as much as we can. But I also want Bajans to work with us. And if when we were growing up, everybody used to clean around the house, not true? I like. Well, we can't get back there. And if you own land, you got a duty to clean it too, even if you ain't living on it. Because if you don't clean it, you're going to harbor all kinds of things and people are going to dump on it. So that's why, and the AG had to put that legislation one side to deal with the legislation for international business and carry and to deal with all other kinds of things. I tell him, put it back at the top. Because people who own land in this country, even if they're not living on it, must keep it clean. And they must keep round them clean. Because with the best will in the world, government can do everything. You know it deep down, and I know it deep down. And that's why I tell you, we would rather people help us clear the land 
than to have to tell you go and find money for your child and grandchild to go to Cave Hill at university. Not true? Or that for you to have to go and look for money every time you need serious health care. And all I'm saying is we cannot do everything. Now, the garbage, unacceptable. And I can find out because the government spent too much money on garbage trucks and new garbage cans for you not to have collection in four weeks. And, and there may be a genuine reason for it. So I'm not blaming anybody when I say it's unacceptable, but I'm saying that it is not good enough for anybody to be without garbage collection for four weeks. And if it means that we got to drop somebody else off in order to make sure that everybody get, that is the Bajan way. Share the burden, share the bounty. So Peter Idno has been talking to SSA, you said, and he will address that directly to you. But I do want us to appreciate that this is the trajectory, this is the slope that we're climbing up. Not because, whereas with some other parishes, is this. With St. Lucy, it is this. Because sometimes people take their own for granted. And that's clearly what happened. And therefore, roads were not done. Water mains were not replaced. A whole host of things did not happen. But I have come to you to tell you that in the same way, I, and Peter knows it. I tell you, people, the same way representing St. Michael Northeast, he, well, he lucky guy representing St. Lucy too. And I represented St. Lucy too because for too long St. Lucy was forgotten. And, and the same thing with Charles and St. John. And this in politics now, this is just reality. Because in my constituency too, under the Labour Party, when we were last in government, they tell me, Ma'am Motley, you don't need. And the people say, Michael North, he's suffering. People behind BIM can get, feel it? Couldn't get the roads done, even though it was signed in the Rayside package of August 2007. Last government come in, and they said, no, take it out. She don't need nothing. The people up there don't need nothing. You understand what I'm telling you? And I had to come in and tell them, I see all. I don't see color when it come to roads. I don't see color when it come to houses. I don't see color when it come to drainage. Mr. Yearwood, I make you do drainage across the entire country. I ever asked you who vote for who out there? Not once, because the country is too small. And we need to reach a stage where things like streets, repairs, drainage, road repairs, street lights, all of garbage collection, those are things that ought to only be the subject of mismanagement rather than access. In other words, if you're not getting it, it's because the system wrong. Or somebody played a fool. But it should never be because of lack of capacity. And that is what we are trying to work to carry Barbados to. Are we there yet? No. But are we getting there? Yes. And that's why instead of being able to spend only how much? Well, 200 million in roads you spend a year now? Less under two? One something? Two? I would like to spend more. But for me to do that, I can't run a 3% primary surplus or whatever, I can't pay down my debt at the same rate. i got to have a little gentle. Put it in simple language, I could lose weight at six pounds a month, five pounds a month, or three pounds a month, two pounds a month. The important thing is that I'm doing what? Losing weight. And that's what we're trying to tell the international world. So when you see me fighting these battles and talking about the Bridgetown Initiative, it is because when it happens to their countries, I tell you about Britain just now, I ain't tell you about Germany, Germany lose World War II. And the countries of the world, the big countries, America and Britain and Canada and all of them get together and tell Germany, don't mind. Instead of you having to pay back your debt with a large amount of the exports that you don't have no more, we can cap how much you got to pay back in any one year. So they help each other. The toll, and I didn't, I'm afraid to say so, to tell all small countries don't print money. When I hear us say so too, because that's what they said, they're lending us if you're printing. But then the US, UK, Japan, Canada, in the pandemic, they didn't print billions, they print what? Trillions. Trillions, a handful of countries. So if we don't go out there and represent ourselves, who will represent for us? And the reason I'm representing it's because of doing the roads and the, and the water mains. At the pace at which we're doing it, I would like to do two to three more times a year. Because we got the money. But you can't spend it 
all in one year and still pay the only debt at the same time. So you need the permission, literally, of the international community to change what they consider to be sustainable debt and how we move towards it. And that's the simplest way. I'm an economist. By trying to break it down in such a way that you all understand what we're fighting overseas in order to be able to make a difference for how much I can allocate when March come to roads and water and to the other things. Peter? Yes, to address <coughs> the, the garbage problem, I would have been speaking with the SSA over the past couple of weeks because we had similar situations I saw in Salmons and um, in Avistown and those areas. Once you let me know, I would um, call them because they're having, there's some challenges with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the garbage trucks. But I've, in my driving around the constituency and I've seen piles of garbage in every area that I ident I've identified thus far, this, it has been fixed within 24 to 48 hours. So I will um, deal with yours tomorrow. And if there are any others in the room um, here tonight, just let me know after the meeting so that I can speak with the, the um, persons at the Sanitation Service Authority. And the bus service. The, the bus service, we would have spoken about the bus service earlier. Yes, that has been a challenge. It's not only, it's not only your route, it is um, also the Pike Corner route. Um, I yeah, get messages every... To, to lay back on. Uh, if, no bus don't come, if no bus don't come, we are stuck. Yeah, Children have to go back home. But, but we explain about the problem with the vans. Because there are very few fans that want to do the long routes up this side. So that's why you have to rely so heavily on the transport board. And you heard Mr. Wharton, the general manager, speak just now. And the truth is that they're going to reallocate some to St. Lucie soon. But they had to pull because of what was happening. And St. Andrew wants you to cut the bridges, both bridges, Bordens and Thompson bridges in St. Andrew. So I hear you. I feel the pain. Some of the buses, bottoms, you say back on stream from next week. So therefore, you're going to start to see a little ease. But you're going to have to wait a little bit until we get the additional buses as well to get the full ease. So you'll get partial ease, but we're trying to make it even better than that. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Can we go now? <clears throat> next person. Yvonne Austin. Yvonne Austin. Immigration. In November uh, 2019... A statement was made and said uh, there was going to be changes to the nationality law and that um, people would be able to get citizenship under the grandchild uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren would be able to get citizenship under their grandparents once they're a Barbadian citizen. Um, I'm just asking for an update as to what's happening with Luckily that. Luckily for you, the Minister of Home Affairs is here. Thank okay. you. Hi, um, that's the plan. We had to pause a number of those things because of COVID. Um, look, COVID has affected us in more ways than people actually really realize. But that is on the cards for this year, for certain. And I want it, believe me, as much as you do. And there are a lot of people who have been holding on to that. And when it comes, we're going to put things in place to fast track it. We, we know there are a lot of people who hold on to this. So when we do change it, um, we're going to have an amnesty accompanying that so people can regularize their status. And we're also gonna put things in place to fast track those applications so that you don't have to wait years for it. You get your application back very quickly. As it stands now, if you go and do a normal application for citizenship in the immigration department now, and all your papers are in order, you get it back in less than a month, right? So we are putting things now in place that as we send the legislation through, we'll be able to accommodate all the people who have a similar interest. So, it come in. Okay. Just a point of order as well. Um, when arriving here in, in Barbados, I live here, I live in Pie Corner, and you're trying to find out information about the process of immigration. If you go to officers, if you go to five officers, you will hear five different things. If you try to get through on the phone, you cannot get through. Sometimes the way you're treated, so I just want to make that known. That's what it's like. I've spoken to other people, tourists and whatever, who've had to deal with that. This has been the thing. Trying to access information on the websites, out of date, you know, wherever you look. It's not just government, but other websites that might be able to tell you something. It's out of date. 
um, no printed matter about the process. You're going through an immigration process and you should be on your application, be given a, pe a piece of paper that says, this is what's going to happen, this is what you do next, and this is what you're to expect. Absolutely nothing. You're asking and you can't get anything. Also, just before I end, also people, the terminology. What's the difference between permanent residence, um, immigration status, work and reside? There's no explanation as to why they're different. You've got situations where a family, some are granted immigration st status and a sibling is granted um, work and reside. Why? These are things, and you, you're not given any, you ask, but you don't get any explanation. All right, I could do this um, two ways, right? I will try to address what you're saying. And in keeping with the um, introduction of the new legislation, and in new forms, we have, we're going to have a rollout that addresses all of that. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no excuse for having um, information that's out of date. Immigration Department has a program ready to roll to address all of that. However, when you finish there, I will go outside and talk to you. You can ask me anything you want to ask me. I'll give yeah. you answers. And my answers are conclusive. Right? Okay. I'll give you all the answers you want. And I will advise you as to where, who you can contact specifically in the immigration department or to pass on that information um, as a definitive person to be able to address your concerns. Okay. okay. And just one more question. Uh, somebody asked me to ask, they wanted to come but they couldn't make it. They said they wanted to know if someone who's got immigration status, they can get free health care. If they're working, they're paying the NIS. But someone who's got work and reside say, um, status, can they pay their NIS but they can't get free health care. They wanted to know why. Yeah, because the work and reside, properly speaking, is not an appropriate form of status. And that's yeah. what we're trying to regularize. Right. It has been undertaken over the years. I have a difficulty with it. Minister knows it. I know it. When I was previously there, I indicated then. And we're trying to do something about it now. Mm -hmm. What I will tell you is that the quality of service in immigration has improved significantly. And it is one of the few departments that where we've, we really, really have to pause and say thank you. They're not yet where they need to be, but the truth is that there have been significant improvements at the immigration department. Okay. And we're going to continue. Where they are constrained is that they're dealing with legislation that is over 50 years old. Mm -hmm. um, Wilfred is correct. We wanted this in place since 2020. But tell me what kind of conversation we could have had about a new immigration bill in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. And if we did with a 30 Love Parliament, people can say, what? The government trying to push through things, trying to hide things. When in truth and in fact, what we're trying to do is to create an atmosphere of fairness and transparency for everyone. And the bill that the minister will, will lay that out clear, clear, clear for everyone. Okay? Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You. Next one. Thanks would be Sherry Benskin, number seven, Zaria Griffith, number eight, Dave Yearwood, number nine, and Antonio Griffith, number ten. No, 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 your numbers are. These are what the numbers from the first time. Sherry Benskin? Yeah. Okay, Zaria Griffith then? Where's Sherry Benskin from? Sherry Benskin is here? She's gone. Who's in it? What's your name there? That's Aria. Spell it. Z A R I E. Okay, and where are you from? St. Lucie. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I'm from Avestown, St. Lucie. Which part? Avestown, St. Lucie. Sorry? Avestown, St. Lucie. Avestown. Go ahead, love. All right, I have three concerns, which would be the Rose and Mount Poya. Um, the tra tractor services, and I also have a question about the housing project. So my major concern is the road in Mount Poya. Um, I think we've heard, so we can take that as a given. Pardon? We've heard on all the roads, so we okay. don't need just... No, but, no, no, I come into the farming and the tractor separately, mm -hmm. but in terms of the roads... 
is road to the farm, to my farm, I should oh, say. Oh, to your farm? Yes, please. Oh. I have But whose who's land is it? The government. <laughs> but. Uh-huh, go ahead. But I'm having difficulty, and I would like if you could assist. Uh, I would like to know how soon you'd be able to assist. Can't so, tell you up front, so, because I don't make promises I can't keep. So oh, the most I can do, I am fooling you, is ask Mr. Innes and them to look, but it may not always be possible, particularly given the fact that they have a limited budget. And right now, I want them to get some equipment to be able to handle and give you all access to the tractor and plowing and all the different things that you need. So, but Mr. Innes, please meet with Ms. Griffith as soon as this meeting is finished with Mr. Phillips and see what we can do and arrange a site visit. And Roy, track it for me, please. On the track to access, tell me. Okay, I see you have heard my complaint before. Um, in terms of the tractor, um, the private tractors, they are there to help, but they are not always on time, so it affects the production of the farmers. So I was suggesting um, if you could do training for persons in the north for the tractor services so we could get other businesses to help the persons who already do private services with tractors so that the production for the, for the farmers could be more. That sounds reasonable, Frederick, because they don't need to rely only on government, so that sounds absolutely reasonable. Okay, and the Thank you. one last thing, the housing, um, you said that it would be available for all. So I want to know how would you make sure that the persons who actually need housing get housing instead of persons who may see the housing as an investment, a way of an investment? Because the requirements for the whole housing is first-time homeowners. Okay. First-time homeowners. All That's right. why I say we may not be able to get to all one time. But I want us to build 10,000 houses minimum in the next five years. And we're putting systems in place for that. Now, the truth is that I would like to overshoot that record, but, or that target, rather. But, but if we get it done, it will make a huge difference. And what government is trying to do is to facilitate those who can get their own mortgages, because then we can concentrate on the rent to own. Because obviously our balance sheet can only carry so much. So that's why all who are public servants, I've told the Ministry of Housing, come and do the fair and get the financial institutions, the banks, the credit unions there, and approve almost overnight. Because if you're a public servant, what I mean? That the bank and the credit union can get the benefit of the assignment from your salary. Just take it out my salary before you see it in my mortgage. For those who can't afford to get a mortgage for whatever reason, those are the ones that then have to come into a conversation for us for rent to own, or sometimes the old time sites and services program where people say, look, give me a lot. I'm going to take care of the rest. You understand? So a combination of the two is where government's balance sheet. In other words, we're going to have to borrow to be able to do those. But if we get the majority of people taking their own mortgage, then it stays off our balance and we can use from hope to private contractors to whoever to build the houses. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Um, Mr. Innes, right, you're at the back. Zaria, you're at the back. And Who's next? Dave Yearwood. What's and his name, sorry? Then Antonio Griffith. Dave Yearwood. Hey, good night, yes, everybody. Yearwood. I just have... Um, Where uh, are you from? Greenwich is St. Lucie. Greenwich. Yeah, I have um, a couple of concerns, and uh, um, one of my main concerns is the land of Mopoya, because I'm a farmer as well at Mopoya. However, um, the land that has been allocated to me was allocated uh, for livestock, which is, which is half acre. I would have then um, uh, asked for more land and um, I went through the right procedures I, because I asked, what is it? What do you have to do? I would have emailed the, I would have emailed the feed program, asked for more land, and still, um, I'm still waiting. And this wait now is probably over 
a, a couple of months. While I'm waiting, the lad at Montpoya, it, um, a lot of the, the lad is overgrown with courage. Um, so I'm saying, you know, this is something I can, I can use. Why, why would they have to um, have okay. courage going on it? Right? When they, could, when they can well, use it. Mr. Ennis is mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. He's seeing Ms. Griffith at the back. Mm -hmm. I give you the assurance that he mm -hmm. can see you. Okay. I can't give you the assurance mm -hmm. that this lot has not been allocated to anybody. Mm -hmm. But like you, mm -hmm. I will want to know that if it is allocated to somebody mm -hmm. and they may use it within a six-month period, mm -hmm. then yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, some person you come, snooze. Some person come from you, whole year. you snooze, yeah. you lose. Yeah. So that they need to work mm -hmm. out the terms and conditions of access that they have. Mm -hmm. I will check into it. Regrettably, the Minister of Agriculture is not here tonight. But I will make sure that he is held accountable with the officers to be able to explain to me what has been happening with the allocations at Monk Poir. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, good. All right, um, thank you. Now, my, my next issue was that I was raised earlier by um, the and lady. Let me say mm. they should have responded because it is mm. unacceptable for you not to have a response. Mm. So I will speak to them and ask them, please, to ensure that even if the answer is no, mm. you have to respond to people. Thank you. All right, thanks. My, my, my next issue is with um, Barbie Installation Authority and, and the, the buses, which is the private owned buses. Now, um, the question that the lady was asking earlier, I can't remember her name from Hope Road, um, was, is, is, is in relation, es, Esther? Yes, yeah. Is in relation to the yellow buses, and not the, not the, which is the mini buses. Um, there are a number of buses that uh, have, are licensed to run the Collington route. And most of them, most of them turn around and spikes down. We have... So they're in, breaching the terms of the license. Yeah, they want... Uh, yeah, I can say that, but anyhow, right. But do you need but, to say yeah, so? Yeah, yeah, they want... Because I can't yeah. say so, we can, I can commit yeah. to investigate. Yeah, yeah. But you have said that we need yeah. to check it. Yeah, so, so they, they, they turn and spikes down. So that's a, one of the reasons to why the bus situation in St. Lucie is so terrible. Um, so we need to look at that. Something. It Thank really you for needs, raising it with us. Yeah. And we'll bring the matter to mm. the Transport Authority because if you have a license mm. to run a route, you either run the route or you lose it. Mm -hmm. Fabian, okay. where are you? Ask him to come back in, please. Did you hear the gentleman? That basically, there are a number of buses that have been allocated licenses for running to as far from Bridgetown to Connelltown. To yeah. And they're turning around in Spitestown instead of running the full route. And to the best of my knowledge, I know you're not Transport Authority or Transport Board, mm -hmm. but if you don't use your license, you're at risk of losing it. Not true? Yeah, I mean, off -route. It means that, well, they're not off route. No, no. They're just not completing they're just, they're the completing road. Completing the road, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In that case, uh, the person who has that permit, the permit owner, would be would be basically not completing their road, the operator, and therefore that that has other implications for it. And that matter is how is how the responsibility be directed to the joint authority and the chief licensing officer. Mm -hmm. So those are the persons who will have to look into that matter, investigate it, and, and address it. Okay, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that. I'm not going too far, Fabian, because others have been complaining also about the routes. Um, who's next? Um, sounds supposed to go check a hall. Turn around and spikes down. So this is a problem where problem the private the transport people really only want to get the spikes down and left it out. St. Lucie. Yeah, fast money, quick money. So, no, 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 it can't work. You hear what I tell you? Share the burden, share the bounty. You want the bounty, take the burden. You understand? Right. Another problem I got in the area. Um, the, the so this is other buses licensed to go where? Spike corner. Turn around, spikes down, back at the road. Quick money. I feel that just as with the gentleman before you, what you're really going to need to do is to, when you see it happen, 
you got to take down the number of the bus, and you got to make a report to the transport authority. At the time that this thing happened, and the number of the vehicle. Well, I think I got. Uh, I, I don't need you all to do no more. I hear enough. Uh, so no, okay, we hear enough. No problem. I, I got a little project that old people out there bay near their um, system bay, a beach little bay. The tourists come up there and use the bathroom, people bathroom, no toilet, no benches, and we just clean up the area. And we got a truck driver that's dry sanitation. It's coming help us. So I'm wondering if tourists spending money here, if the MP could get involved with NCC. You need a public facility. Right. And a few benches. And so the tourists can use. And this little bit? A little bit. And Peter who won't town. So I need the MP to work on it. I, I, I can ask Sophie, because I know that he, is operator government where it's tell all the MPs FSB, you know what FSB he, he stand for? Them. Hold on. No, Mr. Gravy, you know what FSB stand for? You got to break it down for me. You ever had <laughs> people come home at you for lunch? Mm. And when you check, you ain't got enough food? Mm -hmm. And when you tell the rest, FSB, family stand back. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm So I got to intervene now. Uh, I gonna make sure a little bit come because if Peter go and do a little bit first mm -hmm. and don't do other parts of St. Lucy, what would I gonna tell you? <laughs> and if you go and do benches and a public convenience for tourists mm -hmm. and left out things for you in Crab Hill and Josie Hill and Pike Warner, what would I gonna tell you? Well, that so we vote, that we vote for he Peter. understands, he understands, that we vote for Peter. He and exactly, but that's when I gotta come in and help you. Because if he go and take care of home at he first, the rest of St. Lucie can cut off his head. So <laughs> you leave the benches to me and the public convenience to me. No, I and let Peter focus on the rest of St. Lucie. No, he can't. Back to the All right. I know. Um, I talk about the housing part now. Um, they got some two girls at the vet ditch here. They went to housing to um, do the farm, but the pay slips and work and the renting. So I want the Prime Minister or MP again, and you want them again, to help the young lady. They like rent thing, they rent the house in, but they pay six, and really adding up. I, that ain't not making no sense to me neither. I don't know, adding up to, it ain't mean, adding so, up to me neither. Uh, so uh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, but so, suffice it to say that okay. if I think uh, you are talking about what you want to talk about, yeah. this is for public, mate. I know, right? So. I, I, I go, I go what I want to say. <laughs> Uh, 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 and, and this is somebody talking who know what it is for things to get out that shouldn't get out. So but trust I me. I don't know. Right? Uh, it will help him. Eh? I'd like to see um, the Minister of Water Authority one side. I'd like to see the Minister of Water Authority one side. No problem. Peter um, and Rommel will both meet with you and the Water Authority Management is here too. All right, Mr. Griffith. So afterwards, who's next? Good night, everyone. Um, my name is Marcia Miller, and I live in Maycock, Star St. Lucy. Um, the reason I'm here tonight, and Peter is familiar with my situation, about 11 years ago, we built our house in Maycock, and we have a problem with an overgrown lot. Um, it's had termite nests, all kinds of stuff happening there. We have been cleaning this property for the last 11 years and paying for it ourselves. I went to the Ministry of Health, um, the Morris Briar Clinic, about five times. All I get is promises and nobody shows up to clean the lot. About five years ago, I had a problem where the termites came from the lot across the our house and we were lucky that we didn't have to replace the roof. It cost me $1,500 to treat the entire house. I have tried endlessly to see who owned these properties and I can't get no help. I contacted Peter over a year ago and Peter did come to my home and he saw the lot. He also came back about a couple weeks later with about four, four guys. They were from Ministry of Health. I don't know where else they were from. Anyway, they all showed up. 
And I was promised right there that lot would be clean. It's a year and a half later, it's not clean. And on top of that, we're getting all kinds of, I constantly have to treat my house every three months. I'm paying for treatment because I got centipedes, I got all kinds of issues. And my problem is, if, the, if they don't know who own these properties, then sell it to me. I'll buy it. No, like, uh, you know, I don't okay. care. Let, I just me, want let, my let home Let me help clean. you. You heard me speak earlier mm -hmm. <coughs> about the legislation that we're bringing. Yes. That's critical. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition to that, when we clean those lots of people like that who live overseas mm -hmm. or who live here and they don't pay, the bill will then go on the land tax and the potential for them to be fined as well, ticketed. Not a criminal offense, but just ticketed. Yeah, I understand. You will get fined because at some point, people have to be responsible. I agree. And, and I'm so glad that you are speaking mm -hmm. because... People think only about the fact when it's a public nuisance. Mm -hmm. But you are showing that the failure to keep that property in good order mm -hmm. is also costing you money. Yep. Because you're having to do the termite treatment, you're having to do the other things that you would mm -hmm. not otherwise have to do as regularly. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that we can only live on 166 square miles peaceably together Mm -hmm. If we live well with each other and everybody hold their part, hold their lane, do your part. And that's what we're trying to do. As to them not coming back, Peter, I don't know why, because we had a team of people, we still have it in each constituency, mm -hmm. and that clearly is a breakdown in systems and communication. But having said that, I can't continue to take and pay the bill Taxpayers can't carry the cost for people who want the value of their property, but mm -hmm. they're not prepared to take care of it. And at some point, mm -hmm. it has to stop. And mm -hmm. as I said, we had hoped to do it, and then COVID came. And, and don't get tired. COVID put paid to a lot of things and a lot of conversations. Because you couldn't be doing things when people had no money coming in, when you had to be making sure that people could get access. Even the Water Authority. Mm -hmm. We know that the Water Authority is owed almost $100 million because of people who didn't pay. And that's why we said, now, come in and settle. We're going to give you the first two years interest-free. They wanted it only for residential. I said, no. Let me give residential, commercial, because everybody had it hard. First two years, interest-free. But if you want to go beyond the two years, pay some interest now. Okay? Similarly, to do the immigration bill, you couldn't have that conversation in COVID. Mm -hmm. To do the cleaning bill, mm -hmm. it could have happened, but the capacity to find people and do those things, people say, my being unfair, people ain't working, I'm going to know that already. Well, things are coming back to normal. And people who own land, responsibility to keep it clean if you can't pay somebody then borrow a weed whacker or borrow something and go and do it yourself but we need to be able to be our brothers and sisters keeper and to be good neighbors in this country because if we don't do it we not only undermine the public health of the country we cause people to have to spend money on their properties mm -hmm. like you're doing mm -hmm. and we also cause people to be able to hide things that they shouldn't have and to hide people and to do all other kinds of things that they shouldn't be doing because direct prop lead to nuisances in public health mm -hmm. and to threats to public safety. And safety. Okay. okay. Thank you. But, um, Thank you. And, and we will follow up I do need on you making too. sure, Roy, that the teams that are deployed in St. Lucie okay. are there to do it. But I am serving notice that before the end of this year, when we deploy teams like that, we come in with two hands open. One with the instruments to clean, and the other one with the hand to collect the money from those who won't do it themselves. Okay, I appreciate that. But my question is, like, you're saying that I can expect some... I'm just asking how soon, because right now... I can't tell you how soon, but okay. I know that we will, first thing tomorrow morning, okay, that's be fine. on, Peter will get on to them, and we will make sure that those persons come.
All right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I can't tell you how soon, but they'll let you know. Um, I'm told that we're not even halfway through, and that means that we're going to have to speed up people. If not, some people who have individual things that have been said already, I ask you not to repeat on roads. I ask you not to repeat on Mount Poya and lots. I ask you not to repeat on the buses. If you have specific districts, let me finish, that have not been called, just come one side to that table there with Alex and Barry, and they will take the information if we're missing a district or we're missing a road or we're missing something. But if we don't get as wide a group of people speaking on new topics, then we won't hear everybody tonight. Okay, is that fair? Thank you. But if it isn't fair, sir, I will have to speak to you outside and I'm prepared to do so. Thank you. And I, and I think the last time I saw you, I told you, you're the carpenter, right? Good. So we can talk. And you owe me a meal too. I can come for it. Good night, Madam Prime Minister, Minister of Government, and other officials. I stand here tonight without a shame to say thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your management over the last four years. The problem with the road is, is my problem because I have a vehicle, but I see what you are doing and I am pleased because over the four years and months, you have finished a road from Checker Hall to Greenland. You have finished a road in Rock Hall, St. Lucie. You have do a road in, in Crab Hill. Now, I do believe, I know other people feeling the same thing, but I do believe you have done your best for the four years and months. And we are looking forward for more in St. Lucie. We are looking forward for more in St. Lucie. And I have the confidence with my MP and you as the leader and the other, other MPs around who are listening. I am begging, like my MP, I am begging, do the best you can do for St. Lucie for me. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Who's next? Thank you for your comments. Who's next? 13? Yes, sir. Good night. My name is Norman Yearwood. I live at Bob's in St. Lucie. Now, we hear successive governments talk about community, community tourism, about our small businesses, and those sort of things. What I'm saying is that we need to get the infrastructure in place to support the small businesses in St. Lucie. We have Church 22, we have um, Animal Flower Cave, and there's a small business which I usually um, support in Jiltsis, Shiraz Bar. We need to have the roads fixed for these places. If we have tourists coming to Barbados, uh, we need to have the amenities. The Gentlemen just spoke about Little Bay. If tourists are going to Little Bay and the amenities are not there, we're failing the tourists when they come. Right? Now, I have a problem. The water has been beat down relentlessly. At night, I had to be catching water in five gallon bag uh, to put in my washing machine to wash clothes. The water truck comes at varying times at night. Now, I am going to ask a question for the people of St. Lucie, which I hope they will support me on. If we are paying a sewage tax, for which we are not connected to any sewage program, and we are offering, we are getting um, garbage trucks, and we are not getting the garbage picked up, I'm just asking that similarly to what happened in the South Coast, when businesses were compensated for loss of income, that the people of St. Lucie be accepted from the sewage tax. I, I, you know I can't tell you that? Because the lawyers here will tell you the difference between misfeasance and malfeasance. But that's a different story from a legal discussion. So I'm not going to tell you that. But what I can tell you is that I have said to the people in the Water Authority that they need to get the issue resolved. The people of St. Joseph, longer and worse than even you in St. Lucie. And we literally had to go about it. 
It took a while. Nobody believed us. Mr. Halliday, when we thought that we were doing the problems and solving the problems at Vineyard, that we were going to build and build the pipes in, that we were also going to ensure that we built a new reservoir at Castle Grant, that we're also trying to make sure that because the water in St. Joseph comes from both the south and the west, and therefore we're trying to make sure that that can happen. Mr. Yearwood, if you tell me that no garbage can get collected in St. Lucie at all in the last four years since we buy trucks, then I agree with you. But if garbage has been collected in a spotty way, that cannot be the basis of litigation. And, and let, me, let me finish. If everybody wants the same thing all at once, what do you think will happen? M Madam so I am trying, no, 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 I'm trying to solve your problem. But if you then cut off, because at the same time, what did we do during COVID? We gave everybody an ease. I, 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 and I understand your frustration, you know. I understand it. Ma and I had to Ma deal Ma with that and more from the people of St. Joseph and other areas. So I'm saying to you, give us the opportunity to do what we have to do. But for the most part, you can't tell me that you're getting a garbage collection. I'm not saying that, Madam Prime Minister. But, then if, you, but if you're getting, you know where the SSA budget comes from? Not a single cent don't come in terms of the regular budget. We may help them out with capital. But the money that you spend every day to pay wages, to do things. Who are here? You know where it comes from? It comes not from central government. It comes from the garbage and sewage contribution levy. So that the day you decide you're going done with that, then the men at the SSA ain't going to get paid. And the people in the rest of Barbados will also have problems with the collection of their garbage. Now in other countries, people will give you a direct payment and bill. With us, we took the approach that we take for education and health care. That everybody can share in paying a little piece of it. And we used a metric that we felt was fair for households because if you use a little bit of water, a third. You use a lot, a little more. Is Barbados yet perfect? No. But did what did we inherit? Not a single garbage truck was bought in 15 years. And we buy over 30 something garbage trucks. Water Authority, Mr. Halliday, how many water trucks you got now carrying out water? About 30 on the road with others now also as backup. When we came to office, how much was there? Eight? Eight. So when I start to tell you these things, you can penalize me for trying to help you. You're going to penalize me for buying and borrowing and buying trucks for water, to bring water to St. Lucie when you can't get it only other than through mains that give you brown water. You're going to penalize me for trying to help you with the garbage trucks when nobody else didn't buy the garbage trucks for a whole 10 years. I beg you do. Let me get to the point where let me go and find out why the garbage ain't getting collect in the area. And Peter told you, that where it has happened in other areas, SSA has come in and corrected it. Where my problem is, and I'm in a conversation for tonight, that the garbage cans you get gotten RFID technology. And I'm not yet satisfied that we're therefore optimizing the routes and the collection. I see Liz nodding her head. She was a former minister. In fact, she distinguished herself for collecting garbage as well as minister. <laughs> Wanna forget that? No, we saw, we saw. So, I am with you on improving the managerial efficiency in terms of getting it done. Mr. Halliday and the rest here will tell you that we met how long on Friday? About five hours? At least. And we're trying to be able to get them to deal with additional systems. Why? Because whether we like it or not, a drought and a groundwater crisis has put trouble across the world. Oh. Not just here. Now, there are things that I feel they can do better. They know I feel so. And there are things for the first time. We are paying water authority, giving water authority money off of central government. The last two years, this year to come back wanting 60 million. I asked them, from which part? From which part? Now, that's why we went out there overseas and get 
40 million US, 80 million Barbados dollars in a grant. And we got to put 20 million to match it. Now, I, I told them, I hide them out, that instead of stretching that over a four or five year period, do it in what? Two to two and a half years, 24 to 30 months, because it's not going to affect the same fiscal space that I talked about earlier. So if we can use that to run the pipes from Bridgetown to St. Lucie, isn't that partially what part of that is for? And to be able to bring water to St. Lucie that people can use for agriculture and other things as well, then let's do that. But the way to solve the problem, my brother, is not to be able to tell people don't pay because the service is spotty. Because every time I go to Shafet or Kentucky, the food don't taste good. You understand? But you don't get back the money each time. I am hearing you clearly, Madam So work with me. No, Madam I, I, and, and <laughs> what I want to do is to also tell them, make sure that you ain't only collecting water at night, but it's also at user-friendly times. Okay? Can I say something, Madam Prime Minister? Of course, my brother. The point that I am trying to... But I want you to sit in my chair and understand my I, position too. No, I understand too. you clearly Good. because I've sat in chairs where I had to make tough decisions too. Right. You know, what I'm saying is that the same, the same way how businesses were compensated. Well, no, and that's why I tell you about the difference between misfeasance and malfeasance. But, Wilfred, come to the table. But, but Madam Prime Minister... Well, just, no, because you need to understand. I understand. Because clearly. you are saying... That because businesses were compensated in the past that it should happen here. But businesses get compensated when there is an interruption, not when there is a degradation over time. And there's a difference between wear and tear and deliberately leaving a hole that I break open yesterday and leave for you to fall in. And that is the difference. Hold on. And that is the difference between misfeasance and malfeasance. In one instance, the law says you're liable. And in the other instance for wear and tear, there is no liability. So the brown water in St. Lucie will not lead to liability. You understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. So that's the difference. If we had come in, and that's why, where's the gentleman that spoke earlier? When he talked about the line marks, and I tell him, got to be done. And when he talked about the other hole, I ain't tell him yes, and I ain't tell him no, because I don't know whether the hole come from overtime or whether somebody go and dig the hole and it fall in. If the hole get dig fresh and it fall in, then there's a problem. If the hole is a pothole that degenerate over time, then there's no liability. I just give a free law lesson to everybody. <laughs> Madam Prime Minister, the reason... And I want the, the acting AG to confirm when you finish. The, the reason why um, persons in St. Lucie will not get sick because of the brown water is because we are buying water to cook with and to drink. That is one of the reasons why we are not getting sick. Because if we were to get sick using the brown water, then it would lead then to some sort of litigation on the government's part because of the, of the water. So all I'm saying is... That's not it. We will, we will treat you because we got a free healthcare system, period. But what you're dealing with is a lot... And I don't want you to get there. Don't get me wrong. What you're dealing with is the difference in what causes the liability. I am fooling you. And if, if we were liable... He will be the first to tell you that I don't believe in government fighting cases when they're liable. Admit and correct. I tell them that in labor law. I tell them that in tort. I tell them that in breach of contract. Do not fight cases where we know we are wrong. All you can do is give a lawyer money. I ain't in that. What we will do, however, is fix the problem. And that is why I ask the others to let you know. Because we went and looked for grant money. Because all of the money that we spend can be loans because the country can't afford it. And the country can't afford it not because we come to government. You know what we inherited. So I can talk to you straight, my brother. And they've heard you loud and clear. But all I'm saying is that we in St. Lucie need to get something done and quickly. Quickly. I mean, the, the, the same way how priority... My brother, I agree. And the only reason I'm telling you to talk longer is because I know the line long. So I that, and, and I just want to make and those, I will I talk to you to outside too. I just want to make those because two the fact that I have come and listened and insisted that they treat St. Lucie at the Water Authority as their priority now. Not true? Just as they had St. Joseph as their priority, I said St. Lucie and Bosco Bell, Colin is here. 
Boscobel and everything going north I, I can't believe, do has we have to a, be a do, priority. Do we, have, do we have a timeline in which we can get it fixed? I can't tell you because Mr. Leslie spoke at length and told you that we have over 30 kilometers of mains to change. So with the best will in the world, you know how much a kilometer takes cost to change? $1.5 million minimum. So we will do it over the next two, three years, four years, but it's going to be done. And we will do as much as we can. But in addition to that, what you missed was both he and Alex talking about also the desilting. Yeah, desilting and everything that it is. In yeah, but I heard all that. But then you heard some of it. Yeah, you know, okay. so I, I appreciate you your, your explanations and everything, but I still feel that St. Lu people in St. Lucie, as you have said, have been, um, have, uh, have been treated badly for years. Mercifully, and, and we years. can agree, because for years, too many people who should have known better didn't do. But we're going to do. We're going to do. And I don't want any well, political loyalty to do. I will speak personally with my good friend Peter after this year. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're very good with words. And we love you for that. And <laughs> dismissing me as being good with words will not remove the obligation from me to act. So I give you the assurance, sir, Mr. Yearwood, that we will act. And whenever I have a chance to come back to see you again, year, two, three years, four years, whenever the time is, I am assuring you, that you will have more done in one four-year period than you have ever seen done in St. Lucie in your life. Thank you. God bless you. My name is Carlos Husbands, and I'm from Chaka Hall. And I'm just here to you, ask. I'm just in the area of youth development. Um... I'm just asking if there's any possibility. I know that funds are already tight, but is there any way that we can have the upgrading of the Chakaha Pavilion to a resource center? To assist our youth in terms of internet access and access to computers? Because every household, though we know that most households should have internet access, some persons are still needing to have that to assist the children in getting their SBAs and stuff done. And I believe it will be able to benefit persons between the age of 5 and 35, between primary and tertiary institutions. And if this facility be upgraded, that it can be renamed the Jonathan Jones Sporting and Recreational Facility. That's, that's my part. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you, Carlos. Um, I just want to let you know that I've been speaking with the Minister of Sports, Youth Sports and Community Development in relation not just to Chaka Hall, but in relation to a number of the fields across St. Lucie to upgrade them. I, I welcome the suggestion in terms of the renaming of the, of the pavilion as well. But that is something which, of course, has to, it has to go through certain stages before it is done. Thank you. Hi, good night. My name is Fiona Griffith, and this is my brother, Elvin Griffith. He's going to speak with me as well. We are here to discuss the Connell Town playing field. Um, it's a community that covers Greenwich's, Connell Town, Northumberland, and Hope Road. Um, last year, we were well, over the years, we have been asking and then we were begging for our lights because the, the pastor is very, the community is very active. But we could not do a lot of things in the evening because we had no lights, we have no facilities. Um, last year we were blessed to receive lights. But even with that blessing, it came with a downfall, a negative, because up to now, the lights has not been hooked up. So for the last, over the year, we have been using our personal electricity, which has been very costly to our community, which is the North Point Youth Sports and Cultural Club. That, and it, it, it's very frustrating. And we have a number of young people who want to do activities. And we have a number Adam, of... Adam, you don't have to go no further oh. because I am angry. Mm -hmm. And where's Mr. Murrell? 
because we have spoken to sports council about this. Your, your ground is not the only one. There are a number of grounds that had lights put on them. And for whatever reason, between sports council and government electrical, they are not yet hooked up. Where's Mr. Murley? He was here earlier. You, you, you hold tight, madam, and trust me, trust me, I will get a report by Thursday morning in cabinet on this because okay. this, Mr. Merle, come. Because there are too many instances where we have said and we need to know where you have put the lights. The government has given the money for the lights and between you and government electrical still have them not hooked up. So please help because people Aye. are paying out of their own pockets. Hi, Fiona. You. This Aye. is Ignatius like, Bayer, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Connell Town. Connell Town, okay, so Connell Town, the GED certificate was um, received and it's sent to the Barbados Light and Power. We received word today that the, the Barbados Light and Power will be, Barbados Light and Power, Barbados Light and Power would be turning on the lights this week. I that was all we, we got have, from the Barbados Light and Power today. It's a good thing that I got something called St. Lucy Speaks, both <laughs> for the Sports Council and the Light and Power. <laughs> yeah. Like I should have it every month. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So and and then um, I know Mr. Phillips is we we obviously we did it Charlie Griffith at yeah. um, Ignatius Bayer, mm -hmm. um, and that will come in the the next financial year coming right. because we, we didn't have the, we didn't have the resources right. to do it this year. So okay. we're talking about um, the next financial year. So well, that will come. That's good because I was going to speak on that as Ignatius well. Bayer, yeah. But there's another issue we have. We were given a forty foot container was donated to us as well. As we said, we have no facilities. So from Sandy Lane, um, Ch Charity Trust, and we, it came with all the, speak on that. My brother's gonna speak on that. Actually it came, it was a donation from the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, from the Sandy Lane Charitable Trust. This is a um, couple of years ago. And what's happened over the years, we've been using it, been trying to maintain it, but the challenge now is that it has become pretty um, rusty and broken down over the years. And I think it has to do with the area in terms of the sea. It's Carlton? Yeah, it's uh -huh. Carlton as well. Mm. Um, as Peter said, he would have put us on to a number of persons in terms of getting some assistance. But the challenge with that is that each time we do have someone, that person comes, they request quotations, we, we, we go get quotations, and then that person disappears for a period of time. Yeah. You don't hear back from them. Someone else come, and it's the same process over and over and over. Um, so nothing has been done. No assistance at all have been provided. What are the quotations for, sorry? The quotations are for, in terms of repairs of the container itself. Um, the container is used for what? Are they trying to get It's a of? community container. It's used for any kind of recreational facilities, um, activities we have. Um, One of the things we were doing as well is that we wanted to start a reading program. This has also been donated to us, but because, and then Elsa happened, COVID happened, the, the roof is leaking, so all the, the retrofitting has been destroyed. So the container is really bad, but Peter, like my brother said, Peter did send someone, because as we know, Peter is a community person, and... Honestly, we have no bathroom facilities. We have nothing. So we really, really need some help because we have persons who cannot read. And we really wanted to start this no problem. I, I'm going to work with you all on it, um, not just as a condition. Um, Peter is hoping that the, ultimately he has put in a request. And in fact, he took me there at night. It was about 6.30 the evening. When I went with sports council and then yeah. Yeah. the sun had gone down mm -hmm. and I think you had heard. That's how you got the lights and that's why I'm so angry that the lights only now being turned on because that's a year, 15 months. Yes. Secondly, that there was also to be a road tennis court yes. built yes. and also ultimately the bleachers. Well, the bleachers are coming for the whole grounds mm -hmm. across the island and what we will do is choose 10 or 11, 11 grounds um, in fact, it was 15, 15 grounds. And we will try to have at least 1,000 persons accommodated in bleachers in each of the 15 grounds. Okay. But because the bleachers will be mobile, 
if somebody wanted to have a football tournament in Connelltown, for example, they should be able to borrow three, four thousand equivalent, three or four sets of bleachers. <laughs> One. Hello? Yeah, three or four sets of bleachers so that they could have 4,000 accommodated. And that way we can lead to community sport and events. Because if those 15 grounds are fenced in with landscape as well, because I don't believe in fences alone, I never seen anybody run through Bougainville or Pittsburgh. You understand? And it keeps the place looking a certain way. So you have the fence on the inside and the landscaping on the outside you have the ability to charge a $5 or a $10 for a community-based football or cricket tournament. And people then can get more into providing for themselves in the same way that we're asking people to use these schools to be able to put on plays and to have dance recitals and um, music recitals and all them kind of things so that your children can learn the skills and come and show off. On the reading program, you ain't got taught twice. So, I can help you refurbish, get somebody to sponsor to refurbish the container to at least get the reading program going while well, Peter works on the road tennis and the bleachers. And Mr. Merle has said you can get the lights hopefully by next week with light and power. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to thank the members of St. Lucy who have spoken because more and more there's a strong underlying community spirit and if we don't get that community spirit and harness it and take our young people and give them access to opportunity, God help this country. It's so I'm true. thanking very and true. encouraging more of you to do the same thing as the others who have spoken tonight. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. How many more are we going to take, Roy? Three, three more? Because I'm conscious that we have public servants here. And those who can't get to speak tonight, um, come to the side. Anybody on roads or housing or have a number as well. the things we've spoken about, we'll take you on the side for any differences. Okay? Just allow me to speak. I have a number as well, but I'm going to be short. So yes, please allow me. If What's you the will. name? Andrea Austin. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead from where? Yes. I am glad to hear that we are talking about all these different situations but, but we have in St. Lucie. Where are you from, ma'am? Oxford, Thank 23 St. Lucie. And my focus tonight is about the young people. And currently it is a situation with me that I'm having at work, which I'm not appointed for over 15 years. But what really hurts me was when my niece looked at me and said to me, she was fired and nobody gave her any information as to what was her rights. She was not given an unemployment certificate. She wasn't told she had hauled the pay. Nothing was uh, done for her. Is she work in the public sector or the private, private sector? Private sector. Okay. But I work in the public sector. Okay. All right, take time, take time. You're going to speak to the Minister of Labor one side there? Yes. Mr. Jordan, you know who he is? Yes, please. Right. So you'll speak to him, mm -hmm. and he will advise you about the private sector rights. Yes. In terms of the public sector, you're going to speak to him too. Mm -hmm. Because in October 2020, this government passed a piece of yes. legislation mm -hmm. that said that if you were in a position for three years or more, you would be automatically appointed. Now, we knew that there may have been some people who were in a position before for long, but may have gone into a new position for less than three years, and therefore they may feel affected. So we put a mechanism in there for appeals, and the appeals go to the president, mm -hmm. and the president has already heard over 800 and change out of 950 appeals. So if yours is one to be heard, yes. I just need you to come one side, and we'll get the Ministry of Public Service to see if you have appealed or not. If you haven't, then... I can't help you. It's like the old turf club ad. If you don't have a ticket, you don't have a chance. If you haven't appealed, I can't help you with that. But you can then, then separately write the Privy Council, which is now known as um, the Presidential Council. I was given a, an application. 
for the appeal. Prior online for the appeal. So therefore, yes. madam, I can't discuss it now. Correct. But the I president understand. will deal with it. Yes. And in relation to the private sector one with the holiday with pay and all of that, mm -hmm. Colin, Jordan, he will make sure. And if there are problems, he will advise you who to speak to at the labor office tomorrow morning. I appreciate that. Lord and bless you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Who's next? Good night. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What's your name? My name is Natalie Nichols. Natalie Nichols. Sutherland Hill, St. Lucie. Thank you. Some of the issues that I had, they were mentioned before, but however, my concern is, I don't think a forum such as this, if we have environmental issues, we have to wait to come here to address them. Is there an office because the offices there is sanitation or water authority, sometimes it's very difficult to get through to them. How else can we do it? Because for me, this is not the way you deal with, this is not the way you deal with challenges. I can speak for myself. I agree. And that's why I've said that I want to be able, and there are officers here from each department, because if you've been listening to these parish speaks, when it comes to things pertaining to people's personal circumstances, I do not want them discussed publicly because you do not have to do that in this country to get through. Yes. And that's why I've asked the different tables and they will deal with whoever has specific problems if they are of a peculiar personal nature, okay? Because I'm not going to make people wash their linen, come and have to talk it out in order to get problems. These meetings are to address systemic issues, okay? We have problems with roads, we have problems with sporting facilities, we have problems with this, we have problems in the public service, we have this, I got you. But don't come and make anybody come and say, I couldn't get no water for the last three days, and this and that, and I couldn't this, and I couldn't bathe, and this. go straight to the officer directly. So we have rural here, we have um, water authority here, we have, the Prime Minister's office here. So we have a number of agencies and here. And they're set at Just the come one side, yeah. There. In fact, just go straight to my, over here, to this top table here, to Alex and Barry and them, and Darian, and they'll take your issue. Okay, there's also a word Thank of you. caution I have for others with the water tanks, and especially with the, content, the water that's brown. I know for my family, we had a tank the water was contaminated in five of us and it got dengue fever as well. And I'm telling you, it was- I am so sure, uh, but we, we'll talk <laughs> because dengue, I know to be mosquito. It was so. mosquito and that's mm. exactly it. That was the source, the contaminated water. So I got you, so the water was stagnant, but Mr. Leslie will have to explain, that meant the pump wasn't working. Thanks. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, everybody. I'm Pearson Lika, mm -hmm. and I'm from Mount Gay Village. Uh, Mr. Lika, how are you? I didn't think it was you so late in the night. I thought it would have seen you early. <laughs> Talk to me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I understand there's a development at Fustic. Fustic is a village. And the lots that are being sold is only reach of the ordinary person from the village. Now, you and I know... Who's doing the development? You and I know that the village no, comes who, who, under the territory for whole purchase act. Yeah, but who's doing the development? You know, it's public or private? That's what I'm asking. I don't I mean the name of the individual. Oh, is but, it but, public but or private? You don't private? want me to discuss who... No, 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 but I'm just asking if it's public or private so I can get context. I think it's supposed to be public, supposed to be. Those were my um, instructions. But I, my, point, sure. my point, my point, ma'am. I'm not sure my the point. instructions were taken from who, but, 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 but suffice but, it to say. <laughs> let me make my point, ma'am. My yeah. point is that if it is for, um, public, it should go to the residents at any ordinary Barbadian um, that lives at uh, Fawcett Village. It should not be for those who have millions of dollars but who want to take advantage of the rich. Mr. The view from the rich. Mr. Licott, you saw as me. though 
You song as though you are using this platform for another purpose. No, ma'am. But I no, have no difficulty no, with that. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> as secondly, no, ma as secondly, sir. No, ma'am. I do not know I speak of for the any poor person, man from with all due respect, let me finish. If it is a public development, and if it is the hope, I do not know of any person who earns more, and we've been very clear, persons who are public servants, I think we carried it up, Eddie's gone now. Mm -hmm. The teachers, the B BSTU, and the um, Nurses Association asked us to increase the limit from 4000 to $5,000 and under. Yes. And that what we've also said is that if a person is on contract and not permanently employed in the public service, you can probably go up to 6000 So it is intended certainly for nobody who got millions. So I am happy to join hands with you. I'm not sure if you are happy to join hands with me. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I'm happy to join hands with the poor people and the village at first. I, 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 hold on. I'm Mr. Liko. I have just explained to you yes, that the poor people in the village at Fastick, mm -hmm. thank God to Tom Adams and the Tenantry's Freehold Purchase yes. Act. Yes. First of all, let me start there. <clears throat> Secondly, and Tom Adams passed a piece of legislation mm -hmm. that gave people who had two lots or more the right to buy. The Democratic right. Labour Party disenfranchised them and carried it to five lots. I ain't got a problem with that. The, but we, the government of Barbados had to pay out a whole host of people who otherwise were on three lots and four lots and two lots that would have had the right to buy at 10 cents a square foot. And the Democratic Labour Party government in the 1980s changed it from two to five. Ask anybody in here. Secondly, I'm done. Because... I am not going to keep public servants out for what you and I want as a political battle. And this has now become a political issue. Ma'am, is not. But let me then. I am done. I Mr. Leacock. I am done. Because on top of that, this is the first government that has sought to cap the price of land with the price of services with giving you the opportunity to earn. Now, don't come in here and abuse the opportunity for a town hall meeting with people mm -hmm. and try to make anybody here or elsewhere mm -hmm. believe that government's housing program is for people earning millions of dollars. And you gave away your hand. You gave away your hand by trying to participate in a form of hyperbole that is not even fitting, sir, of, of, of anybody tonight. So wait, let wait, the wait, people wait, of St. Lucie, who wait. are nurses, who are teachers, and who are policemen. Mm -hmm. Because that's who the whole wait. program was designed for initially. And if, and I don't know, but I give you the assurance that I will investigate right. what I is get the back development. To these good people, ma'am. And let me, them know if it's private me, or public, ma'am. Mr. Ma Lico, I do. don't need you to advise me how to canvas or Agreed. speak to people in St. Lucie. I, 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 that is my request tonight. That is my request tonight, ma'am, that you do that. All right. Now, if you want, and, and look, I am very clear, you know. If you want to use this town hall no, meeting for political po shots, no, no, I know how to ball political Yorkers. <laughs> I might even this give you a political googly. No. But what I don't want no, is that if you come here now, no, you want to talk to me straight without trying to engage in hyperbole, you got me, Skipper. And I'm going to come and hug you up and show that you got me. <laughs> you understand? But not but, really political hyperbole, no, sir. No, ma'am... Um, I'm moving on to something else. Now that you, wait, wait, wait. Now that you spoke about housing, I might believe that the agencies of government are available to all of us. So if you have an issue, like a fire victim loses his house or her house, national housing should assist. Agreed. And I am wait, aware. Wait, 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 let me hold on, and I'm aware that finish. where national housing can, it does. Now I'm also aware that where communities can, they do. And I'm also aware that political institutions also do. So that I get you. 
But it isn't always at the very time that you want. And here's the problem we inherited. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen before. There was a time when welfare used to pay people. And people would take welfare money willingly. Mm -hmm. Because of the problems that took place between 2012 and 2018. Mm -hmm. When they were not being paid. Welfare now tells poor people in this country. It's not welfare. Landlords tell poor people in this country mm -hmm. that even when you are getting welfare to pay, they don't want to rent to you because they don't know how fast welfare is going to pay. Now, Kirk Humphrey is there. And I've said to Minister Humphrey, find an intermediary to give the landlords of this country the comfort that when government says it will pay its money, it does so. So that the housing stock that has been removed mm -hmm. from the rental market for people who are having their rent paid for by welfare mm -hmm. can be put back in. Because it is a wrong thing, Kirk. And you can speak to it if you want. But it is a wrong thing when people in a country say we don't want to rent to poor people because we frightened that welfare ain't going to pay us on time. That's what we inherited. But this is the same government mm -hmm. that has paid down 1.7 billion out of 1.9 billion in arrears. Bills that were never paid. And the ones that we still own now are because in BRA, the revenue authority, the systems went bad and all of a sudden money pop up last year that was owing to people that was never recorded before. So I hear you, Mr. Leacock, mm. but I can deal with you fair because if you want to know the truth, mm. that we also make sure that we don't ask nobody. This government has now been rebuilding houses, Corey, from Elsa and from the freak storm. Kurt, have we asked a single person who to vote for, who to support, to get access to housing or services? Not one. But I go in St. Lucie and the first body I beat up with you, Peter, when we went after the freak storm, was a man whose house was destroyed in Thomas. Now, what year was Hurricane Thomas? 2010. And that's why I'm telling you, Skipper, don't let me get into the political but, to and fro. Ma because does, if we do, I we ask the question yet, yeah, ma'am. Be fair to me. You did. But no, no. I'm saying that national assistance boards should be able to reach out to anybody who's lost their house. I'm it also does. saying that rural and, and urban should also be able to assist persons who lost their house. I'm speaking about a retired civil servant who's a double amputee, who is blind, who lives in Picorne, St. Lucie, and all of the government agencies turn their back on that woman. Well, I am the voice of that person tonight. I am the voice of that person Ms. tonight. Mr. Leacock. Mr. Leacock. She cannot speak for herself. Mr. I will speak for Mr. her, ma'am. Ma'am, you had a long run just no, now. Mr. Leacock, I will speak for her. Respect, with all due respect, sir. Mr. Leacock. The only thing, the only thing, is that right, madam? Madam, cool it, cool it. The only thing that is repetition, and the art of repetition is politics. No, and you are playing straight politics. No, ma'am. I have no, no difficulty. I am speaking no for somebody difficulty. who does not have a Sir, voice tonight. Mr. Lico. Who does not have a Mr. voice. Mr. Lico, with all due respect. No, leave him. Mr. Leacock, with all due respect. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do you know? And I want you to go and check other Caribbean countries. No, I want to know oh, why, no, no, why, with why, all why due the agencies turned their back on that lady. I want to know. You're the prime minister. Mr. Leacock, if the agency has turned her back, on I don't her. know on her. I don't know about it. But I'm asking but, you to investigate, ma'am. And Mr. Leacock. Mr. Liga, if you want to be fair to that lady, you are going to go and do like everybody else in here tonight. But you are seeking to promote yourself on the back of a double amputee, which is an unfortunate position because nobody who cares about people, and especially in these town hall meetings, 
I have not tolerated people speaking about themselves, far less you speaking, because everybody in St. Lucie, St. Lucie is a small place, and everybody in St. Lucie know who is a double amputee in whatever district. So for you to get up here and talk about that lady's business is the most unfortunate expression of political pushing yourself. Come to the side, give her name like anybody else who has gone to give their names in every one of the town hall meetings since last year, April. Since last year, April. I am not, I am not going to agree that anybody who wants to be a political candidate is going to use these meetings to proffer themselves on the backs of a double amputee or any individual who is suffering. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. And you know, if I were to allow Peter Phillips to answer you, you might be truly embarrassed as to who was the person who should have helped her as MP. Yes, ma'am. Name. Good night to all. My name is Sheena Griffith, and I'm from Crab Hill, St. Lucie. Pardon me? No, I was aware because okay. earlier you heard me Your say that It's Mr. not just Ward the roads. No, 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 it's not okay. the roads. Okay. Earlier, I made the point that Mr. Burton Ward and others are supposed to be doing the drilling. No, but I mean like believe, getting the tanks, the water brought. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that they believe that there's water nearby Mount Poye for you. So we have to wait on the drilling results. Mr. Leslie, you want to speak to this for her benefit, please? Hold, hold on. I, I'm not talking about the drilling part. I'm talking the fact that where water is being brought to us and how the truck No, I know, don't. but the water is only being brought to you for now. I know. Because we haven't solved the problem of being able to have access to pipe water from that area by looking for the additional water underground. That's all. Okay. But what I would like to know is what is being done when the truck men don't bring the water. Well, I can deal with that, Mr. Innes is here. Okay. But I want you to have a solution that is long-lasting. Okay. That don't depend on truck men. Mr. Leslie? Um. Okay. Um, good evening again. In the... the there's only one well at Mount Poyer um, that, is, that was developed by the BADMC. And that well is not sufficient right now to be able to help the farmers in that area. Um, as the Prime Minister correctly said, we are working with a, a driller, a, um, a company, to, to do some exploration in the area. We're doing exploration in the Mount Poyer area. We started at Hope and we're going to continue up to Mount Poyer. Then we're going to continue from Mount Poyer over to the Broomfield area. And the intention is to be able to develop two wells in that area that will be able to supply the farmers with water rather than water from the trucks. Right? Thank you. Um, and next issue we have, there is a real bad problem with uh, pretty larceny up there. And... I, I basically had to harvest cassava before the time because people were stealing them. There's also the issue of roaming cows up there from the farm on the other side that comes over and, and destroy the, the crops. And destroy the crops. Yes. Mr. Innes, and are you all aware about the problem with the cows roaming and to be able to speak to the farmer to help corral those cows? Thank you. And then with respect to the predial larceny, mm -hmm. this is not a straightforward issue. Yeah. And as you know, over the years, the police and the defense force were doing patrols. Mm -hmm. What we have agreed with the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Public Works and others is to set up an aerial monitoring unit as far as possible to try and see how we can militate and mitigate against people. Because if you have technology, Barbados may seem big to us, but when you put a drone up there, you can see large areas quickly. And then there are other technological developments that the minister is looking into to see how we can also seek to reduce predial larceny. So it's not a straightforward area. We need to publicly educate people. We need to enforce. 
we need to increase the level of surveillance. We need to do the technical and aerial monitoring and a number of other technological developments. So, um, and I feel your pain yeah. because whether it is a flood or whether it's somebody teething it, you can't be putting in that kind of effort then to end up with that. Yes. So we are working with as many people as possible um, to be able, and I think you saw the legislation the minister would have addressed in parliament last week. He finished the debate, I believe. So we will continue. Okay, thank you. And on the next note, I'm doing this for a friend of mine. He, he, they have spoken about the Great Hall playing fee next to Archer's. It had burned, the structure on it had burned down. They, was, they were wondering if it can be replaced. Well, I'm Peter's going to talk. Good night. This is the area next to Archer's Bay, correct? Yeah. Well, plan de there's planned development for that with a playing field, a hard court, and, rest and restoration of the entire field. Okay, Hence, I've you had you a meeting much. with the, the owners of the cows and asked them to just shift further above because we're, we're dealing with that. Okay, so there's a whole development much. plan for there, including Archer's Bay. Okay, thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Last person. Last person. I am the last. So if you know you're talking about roads <laughs> or water or housing, that we can take you on the no. side. And we, we were a person gone. I thought a big person to give the lady's name to the side. He, gone, he left without giving the name? Person? Come. Where person is? No, seriously, if you really want to help the lady come, person, I can talk to you. No, come, come to the back to meet me. Okay? Thank you. Good night, one and all. Um, let me begin by saying, Madam Prime Minister, I was very pleased with your introduction um, during the summer holidays of that school news program. That pleased me. I do believe it wanted some tweaking, and I hope that you are considering making it, you know, an annual thing because we have a lot of children who really need to yeah. get this. What, what's your name again, sorry? Barbara Ann Broom Bailey. Thank you. Um, I'm from where? Josie Hill, St. Lucie. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just thing to be proud, and I don't want you you're to give You're a former principal, up. aren't you? Yes, I am. So therefore, you are well positioned to speak. Yes. Thank you. And I wouldn't want you to give up on that program because like everything else in education, I believe that we are giving up on these things too quickly. Um, you know, strategies and policies are implemented and you hear about it this morning, you try to put it in place and in about two weeks, somebody comes along and say, oh, we are doing something different. I think that you, well, this government is a government to really put some policies and principles, strategies in place for education. Why I'm saying that, I believe that people will listen. And ma'am, on a side, even if they don't agree and they get vets though, something like this takes about two years before it actually works. They will get back please because they will see results. But you need some serious people who are willing to push forward and put these things in place and not chummy buddies who will not know someone who's trying to do the right thing. I also believe that the primary schools in Barbados, that those are the schools that these policies and strategies need to be implemented first and foremost. We can't wait until a child gets to secondary school and realize, hey, this child can't read, they can't add or whatever. But they are, we are failing them because the things that are put in place, they don't last. They do not last. And if you as a leader try to insist that things are done, but well, ma'am, you know what happens. And then 
too much of friends, buddies, chums get involved and prevent these issues. It's time that people look at education in Barbados and address particular issues. I have this thing about reading and comprehension. If you can read and understand, your math will become easier. Your science will become easier. Your communication will become easier. But you need to be able to do the reading and the comprehension. And one last thing, I believe that it is time that the government look at putting, I know you do craft things and those kind of things for our parents, but do some reading. Put some reading in some community posts, the teaching of reading. And at first, people might not want to come, but if it is done, you know, long enough, somebody might come to look and get hooked. So I honestly believe that these are the things that need to be addressed so that our education system can really see moving up because I'm really hurt by what is happening with it right now. I want to thank you for raising this issue. And I want to speak to it. First and foremost, the summer nutrition program was critical mm -hmm. because a lot of children were not getting access no. to food. And without school and school meals, mm -hmm. we take a lot for granted. It is true. Secondly, the, how many of us in here would have survived if we were denied three years of continuous schooling. It's true. Very few of us. Yeah, and that's true. exactly what just happened to our children for yes. the last three years. Yes. And I want to speak publicly to this because there are people who are trying to misinterpret what we say is a diagnostic test into some kind of fun, fancy tweet and, 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 and trying to affect our children. Yes. All we want, and you would know, is the equivalent of the criterion reference test yes. as diagnostic tools to be able to see what is the body of knowledge, what is the capacity to read, what is the capacity to be numerate. Because if we don't produce children who are functionally literate, numerate, and whose emotional and social learning yes. develops, we're going to have problems in this yes. country. Yes. And I have said to the Ministry of Education, and Cabinet has reinforced it, that the most urgent thing this term is to get in and assess where our, especially at the secondary level, because we ain't gonna have them for much longer. Our third and fourth formers, the ones who are fifth, we're gonna have to take in and number of them in the youth advance core. And it costs the government significant amounts of money to run the youth advance core. But we are doing it in scale, at scale, a thousand people a year for two years and paying them a stipend because if we don't take them in one way, we're going to yeah. pay for them the next way mm -hmm. in another institution. Mm -hmm. Simple talk, yeah. straight talk. Mm -hmm. Secondly, all of us in here know that our parents and great-grandparents, many of them went to seventh standard. But a good seventh standard education equipped them for what? Mm -hmm. For life. And they could read things. They could teach themselves yes. after yes. your simple point. Yes. They understood basic comprehension and they can read. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they were also, how many carpenters were better physicists than people who went and do it physics at university? Mm -hmm. Because they understood a trust and all them kinds of things. They understood mm -hmm. algebra without calling it that. Okay? And we have to get back to a stage where we can guarantee functional literacy, yes. functional numeracy, and making sure that you develop socially in a way that you're supposed to. The older you get, actions have consequences. Choices have consequences. And you begin to develop and you need to know how to function in a society yeah. rather than believing is your one that could get through in everything. Mm -hmm. In cricket, but you learn that if you want to play with everybody, you're going to win and you're going to lose, but you can't pick up your bat and ball and go on because it's yours. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, the rest of the people in the community will judge you accordingly. Yes. Yes. What we need... I still believe that what we the, need, the primary system I come even into that. more important no, I come into that. than the secondary Hold on, system. I come into that because the only reason I'm saying that you have to do that diagnostic testing yes. urgently there mm -hmm. is that we have systems in place in the primary school 
for the diagnostic testing at seven and at nine. But how, how, how functional? Because it has not been operating in the way I was the minister of education yes. who introduced criterion reference testing in this country. Yes. And I am horrified that I hear stories I don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, that test was to tell you what the deficit in learning was. Nationwide. So that the nationwide. No, right, but no for the individual. Yes, to but teach, nationwide. But it to was teach nationwide. that individual and to bridge that deficit. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I feel that no child should leave primary school to go to secondary without an individual portfolio that tells me what are this child's strengths or weaknesses so that instead of the secondary school having to start from scratch, they can do and continue from the work with the primary school. Mm -hmm. But ma'am, that was a program that y'all had started I years know, ago. and it was reversed. And it stopped. You don't have to tell me. Just that. like everything else. Look, that's why you got all the gray hair. Because there are too many things that were started and just thrown out the window yes. because somebody didn't want to see them continue. Mm -hmm. We were testing. We became the first country in the Americas, in the hemisphere, to test people for hearing, speech, and sight impairment mm -hmm. at age three and at age five. Yes. I now have to find money to reintroduce it because the country stopped it for years mm -hmm. now. And I'm saying to you all that these are the things that we need to protect public expenditure on because you can bring back down debt overnight, but you can't change and turn around a society where people have fallen off the edge because then you have mental problems and you have criminal issues and you have all other kinds of mm -hmm. issues and lack of confidence and lack of capacity to build and to invest and to move to the next level. So that at the primary level, we want to strengthen by reintroducing the hearing, speech and sight tests. Yeah. We want to strengthen immediately because even if you did and are getting the criterion reference test, those who are in class three and class four, those who are in form three and form four, primary and secondary, those are the ones in immediate risk mm -hmm. of difficulty because they have not had the foundational elements and they are close to leaving. And if we don't take the time to find out where the learning deficit is, where the learning gaps are, and at least carry them to functional literacy and functional numeracy yeah. and deal with a social and emotional learning development, we're not going to get them where we need to go. Mm -hmm. And that's all this government wants yes. to do because yes. we know deep down that many of us would not be where we are today if we were deprived of it's continuous true. schooling face-to-face -face for three years. It's true. And Mama, one last thing. Um, you need to give instructions for teachers to be trained adequately in the teaching of reading. A lot of people don't know how to do that. And they're not taught how to do it. That's why we had the reading so, program. So Cynthia Ford would tell you that. And the fact that the reading program stopped is a great tragedy. But we're not only going to reintroduce it at the primary level. Yes. But I want it, as you just said, in the communities. Yes. Yes. Because where people feel that they want another chance. And in some instances, they may never have had the chance appropriately to learn. Yes, it's true. And there are too many people, when I came to public life, people would not tell you that they can't read or write. No. But you would hear quietly on the side, oh, this body can't dance. Yes. Or, or, or they would come and say, um, you have to take care of me. Exactly. So you know and they have a little way, and we yes. respected that, yes. and we helped them. But after this country has had basically free secondary education for over 60 years, we have to pause and get it right. Yes. I am aware that the Minister of Education will be bringing something to the country shortly, mm -hmm. but I can only say to Barbadians that after a 1940s British education system that said, deal with the top 40% and the other 60%, make sure that you can corral them and they're controllable. That's not what we want. I brought a white paper called Each One Matters. Yes. I want each child to matter in this country and for us to provide for each child again. And that's why getting the economy to grow, that's why getting everybody to work harder and putting in a little more so that we can do what we have to carry long, Bajans, yes. is the most important thing. And, and Pearson, where is he? 
I, I, I want, no, and I wasn't joking. I want us to agree on these things. Yes. Because this country thrived when there was no division on education reform and education excellence. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of things that we need to hold down the line and agree that come what may, come what may, we are going to invest in education again and that education is what defines us from other countries mm -hmm. because of the investment that we give in each of our children. Yeah. Don't let it be a bad investment. Let us get it right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank now, you, ma'am. I want to thank the people who have come out tonight. And uh, no more, because I got public service. No begging, no turn, no true. I, I, and I will see some of you, but the reality is that I have a number of public servants out. And these town halls will only work if it is a combination of public servants and others. Those who have other issues that they want to ask about, the people at this table here, myself and one or two of the MPs, we will be here to ask you. But we have to stop and to allow the public servants to go home. So thank you very much for coming out, St. Lucy. And those who want to continue, come and we can talk one by one. Thank you.